Welcome everybody to, you know, it's funny. I just completely forgot about the normal intro and just went right to our, our full frame. Uh, <laughs> welcome Hi. to Adrift in Aldalore. Uh, welcome, welcome to our show. Uh, our music is licensed through musicbed.com and we use Bardly to disperse it amongst ourselves. Uh, and uh, occasionally we use tabletop audio or Sirenscape sometimes, not usually on this show, but sometimes on the channel. Shannon. What's up? What's up? What's up? How are you? All right. Tell me tell me great. whatever you usually tell me. <laughs> All right, great. So Sean, I'm a I'm gonna tell you about our partners, if that's okay. Our our, our channel partners. Um starting with Arcane Spectacles. Oh, also, uh, like myself, I'm not recording on Audacity. So uh, yeah, do... same. Let's do that. Uh, <laughs> let's do that. Whoops. That's why I have Shout red in Audacity. all capitals. <laughs> 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 all right. Now, I'm going to tell you about Arcane Spectacles. Fuel your adventures with Arcane Spectacles Adventure Mugs. Available in 11 ounce and 15 ounce sizes. Except you have yours available that you can show off now that you're on screen. What are you? What are you? If it's away, you don't have, like way away. Okay, what are you talking about? That's fine. The I mugs. can find mine. Oh, no, it's okay. It's oh. okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh. I'm gonna be done by the time you find. Okay, I just if you had it handy. Mine's in the washing know. machine. I just oh, okay. used it this morning, and I was taking. you use it all the on... time, right? Because you love I... it so much. Yes, it took me on magical adventures yes. as I drank my bean juice. So. <laughs> the magical bean juice. Their sturdy ceramic mugs, complete with high-quality printing, are perfect for TTRPG and D&D enthusiasts. Start your day with a jolt of excitement, just like Stefan did, and choose your size for the ultimate gaming experience. Get yours now at arcanespectacles.com. Next, we have Underground, whoops, Underground Oracle Publishing. They are a best-selling, any-nominated TTRPG publisher building new and exciting settings for the cipher system of every genre that you can imagine. Each setting includes everything you need to explore its unique world, including... <clears throat> lore, species, descriptors, foci, creatures, ciphers, artifacts, and all of the rules that you need to play. For as little as $3, you can join their Patreon and help shape each of the worlds that they create. Last but certainly not least, we have Eddie York, our beloved character artist. Um, you will see our art scrolling there shortly. Actually, no, it should be now because we're on, we're on, the, we're on the main screen. Our character art is scrolling. Hey! Um... He's an illustrator based in the UK who makes art for games and books. I just saw he tweeted earlier today that he's got four commission spots open. So if you're looking for some uh, some art, get on that. Jacquet was pictured in the promo tweet. It was great. Yeah. Um, so to visit his portfolio and get in contact with him, visit eork.com. Couple of miscellaneous thingamajiggers. If you are not already a member of our Discord, Join us. We would love to have you on Discord. Sean does recaps. We post our VODs there. Sometimes we talk about some stuff. It's kind of quiet because, you know, life. But uh, we're always happy to answer story questions. Um, you can also join us in Paradise on Blue Sky, uh, Twitter slash X, uh, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. All done. Oh, is that it? That's it. Unless there's anything else you would like to say. Uh, our VODs are going to be up to date by, uh, Midnight tomorrow. Midnight tonight. Midnight tonight. Um, Midnight tonight. Our recaps are not up to date because I'm technically missing two that I need to write because I didn't write them the day oh, of stream. no. Um, but once I do write them, every one, all, all the other ones are, are written. Thank you, David. And speaking of all of the recaps being written, let's jump into our recap. Last we left off, Iron and Mana awoke at Septimus's farm after fleeing Hyven. The night before, they received a visit from a fiendish courier sent by Ro the Trickster, an archdevil, and to some, a god. The creature offered Fearn a deal and remarked that his brother is in the north, but Fearn refused this deal, and in the light of the morning, the party discussed the best move forward. He opened up about his brother, named Hornless, or uh, Grandel, uh, otherwise known. Is it Grandel or G with a hard G? Hard G. We're Gerandel, not Gerandel. Yeah, there we <laughs> okay, go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
His brother Hornless was an adopted human with a true name of Durandel. A hothead like Fearn, but even more stubborn and determined. The two were exiled together after a kin slaying and tasked with an impossible quest to retrieve the Ithil Dagnir, a mythological weapon. He revealed a clue about its location that he received from Lucas Pascal's research back in Hyven. The dead hammer awaits the worthy in the palm of the unworthy, near the resting place of the first exile. The worthy must take the indecipherable in this garden of rhyme decay, where the unworthy find no peace, only the long piercing agony of the hoarfrost. Though Fearn was uncertain about the worthiness of entering north for his brother, the party convinced him it was a worthy endeavor if he wished to see his brother alive and for the opportunity to lift the curse on his mask as well. Furthermore, Sass scried on his brother and discovered him amongst a shipwreck by a frozen taiga landscape with a belching volcano not far. The confirmation that he was alive and a heading gave the party and fear and hope for finding him. They asked Balfour, the hedge knight, if he knew much about the north. He spoke of the known settlements, in the multiple paths through the cold from the sea over land and over mountain pass. He warned that the land is rife with angry and wild spirits and of significant danger not seen in the settled parts of Alfdal. This led the party to question Balfour on his own quest. What is he doing in Asia? It turns out he was heading to Hyven to seek an audience with the Commodore. For he knew her when she was young and had hopes of turning her road back towards the path of the hedge knights. Confirming the rumor they heard that when she was young, she wanted to become a hedge knight. The party then began the rest of the day uh, with preparations, as they knew it would indeed take a lot of time to plan their excursion north. Bruce and Fearn began working on fixing Septimus's roof while Jacquette snoozed and read beneath a tree with a bottle of wine. And Sass and Septimus went to thank Granny Lani for the support she and the neighbors offered Septimus. Amidst this visit, she did insinuate that Septimus should get married, and then uh, insinuated that Sass would be a good uh, candidate for such a marriage, sending Septimus into a bit of a tizzy uh, that Sass fed into for her own entertainment. But amidst all these tasks, another fiendish visitor arrived. A smaller fiend with an excessively large scroll and a rather clean uniform uh, appeared and began to see, he seemed to begin investigating the farm for something. When confronted, the creature revealed itself to be a notary on behalf of the Diadem of Hell, specifically the Tabernacle of Verity, tasked with auditing an unsanctioned pact offering. The creature became frustrated with the party, as many do. But Fearn took it aside with Sass and told it the unsanctioned pact offer was specifically from Ro the Trickster, which sent the creature into a bit more of a tizzy. Uh, and then Fearn promptly banished the creature before it could do any sort of- I banished it. Oh, it was you? Yeah, oh. it was me. I can do that. Well- That's what you get for reading my notes, Sean. <laughs> that is what I get for reading your notes. <laughs> And for a two-week break. <laughs> well, Sass, I guess, banished it. I don't know. I wasn't there. Um, <laughs> no, Saskia banished the creature after uh, Fearn did his little last-minute interrogation. But the party would be gathering soon to decide what to do to prepare what they need to do over the next few weeks before they also decide what path to take towards uh, the ghosts who haunt the north of the island. But elsewhere in the world, we saw unrest in the labyrinthian cities, uh, city streets of Halcyon, the capital jewel of Kiranor, also home to Bruce. But we saw tired citizens protesting against the capital guard as the unrest in the city was turning violent. But before this unrest could escalate too far, 
All of them were silenced by the deep bellowing sounds of bells coming from an ancient floating citadel that rests above the city. A citadel topped with dark green magic splaying out from another plane of existence. This tower predates every single structure of the Kiranor Empire, every single settlement on the Alfda Islands and the small settlements within the Far Lands and the North. This is truly a structure from the ancient world. But in recorded history of this age, it was known that the last time this tower rang such a call, the Machina awoke. So the nervous guards and citizens looked to their Machina servants all around them before we ended our session. So, Iron and Mana, a uh, devil notary was just banished. Uh, the afternoon is upon you. Now, I'll give you all a moment to do any kind of discussion in active RP before I think we'll switch into in a true downtime where we'll, we'll go week by week with what you guys want to do. You don't have to be doing anything during this time other than if you want your character can be resting uh or their character could be studying they could be as i believe some of you may want to do sneaking back into hyven so there's several things we can do but is there anything anyone would like to do before we engage in these activities we'll say fear and sass just came back from banishing the, the little guy <laughs> I mean, I'm saying this because I know Bruce had wanted to go into the city. Uh, Jacquet, using his disguise kit, will assist basically the other three if they had any want to go into the city with creating a disguise. All right, so I think it would just be Except Bruce this, then. Like, nope. <laughs> um, so Jacquet would spend some time with Bruce getting him a disguise ready uh, so that he could enter incognito. Okay. I'll just be, uh, while you're doing that, I'll just be like trying out different looks because I can cast Disguise Self as a look. What do you think about this one? Is this is this too too much? And it's just like a, I don't know, like a really ornate, like really rich woman with big poofy dress and big powdered wig and lots of jewelry. I, is too much? Yeah, probably for the for what we're about to do. What about what this? About what about Granny Brine? Oh, she fuck, was... I forgot about her! And poof! Granny Brine. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You won't stand out at all like that. What kind of voice should I use for her? That's perfect. Do that. That's just my normal voice. Yeah, well, I think the whole aesthetic is so different, no one will notice. Hulk slower. Oh. Old people talk slower. All right. All right. I think I can do that. I mean, I think I can do that. That was really good. I'm thanks. impressed. Thanks. 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 <laughs> thanks. I take direction really well. <laughs> okay. So we have uh, three disguises because <laughs> it only doesn't take Jacques quite long to make a disguise. Um, uh, suitable for Bruce uh, with his different variety of makeups and and I imagine you you like have like the tools to like modify like clothes within the disguise kit and whatnot. Yeah, and you know, Jacquette is not above raiding Septimus's uh, family's dressers, scraps of clothing to put together. I suppose it might be a good idea to get a map for the north, but I think that the only place in uh, Halcyon that would have that is the Academy, and we can't just really walk in there as anybody. They'd have to know it's us in order to let us in, right? Maybe. I mean, I think Bruce plans to go to the Academy, so we'll let him figure that out. He said that he would take care of a lot of the prep work in that regard. All right. say at this time bruce just sort of uh scoffed as soon as fear and walked away with the the devil 
you heard a little like mumbling under Bruce's breath as he just head into the workshop and is working in there for now. <clears throat> um, and, and the other thing too is like, based on what I imagine some of you want to do, like this is going to be a few, at least a few weeks of downtime. So the Academy can always be something that happens not in the first week. Very end. You know? Right. So, um, what, what are your plans? If you're, if you're risking detection, what, what do you plan on doing in Halcyon? We need supplies. Specifically, some of us are not equipped for dealing with the, uh, cold climate. I was going to look for something that will help us out there in the north. Additionally, we'll need to book passage. Pretty sure we all agreed, yes, that we would take the boat uh, to the city and then head out from there. I mean, I don't know if it's worth risking, you know, detection to just get some uh, supplies I'm, okay. for... I'm not risking <laughs> anything, Fjern, okay? I will disguise myself, get in and out, easy peasy. Don't you trust me? I don't know. I mean, a minute ago you were talking about leaving and giving up on our whole crusade. I don't know what you're talking about. It's not a crusade. And I'm here to help you, Fjern. We're going to find your brother, and I'm going to fix that whole mask issue that, yes, is my fault. And then after that, I guess, you know, we'll retire our hats, you know? Can't go back to Hyven as Iron Mana, so... You also have a bit of a track record for underestimating your enemies. What do you mean by that? I'm just saying, uh... No, what do you mean by that? Don't say you're just... What do you mean? I'm saying that when we had the chance to uh, get back up, before attacking the uh, brothers, uh, we decided that it would be better if we handled things ourselves, and we went over our head. We? Hmm? You were in on it as well. But I disagree with the plan. This is not just a plan. me thing. That's fair. We also didn't know that Sam and his cronies were going to be there. And you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I didn't think the DeLeon brothers could sling spells like that, okay? My apologies. No one has ever spoken about them in that way. So yeah, you know what? Fuck you, Fjern. Maybe I did overestimate them. But I am not going to underestimate myself in getting out of a pickle. Fair enough. I disguise myself and no one will know to be the wiser. Okay. So Don't doubt me. <laughs> uh Okay. So, uh before we jump into regular down like true downtime, are there any last minute role playing things you'd like to do this day before we go into a more uh <clears throat> request for what you want to do for the week, results for the week, role play. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to go through week one. Wow. <laughs> um, so, uh, let's see. I think actually what would be the, probably be the best way to do this for at least like the very basic stuff is just to do a quick initiative roll. And we'll go through the initiative and just be like, and not, not your, don't add your dexterity. Just roll a d20. Hmm. this is just for an order um because <laughs> it's like ah oh, yes the rogue gets to go first in all downtime uh <laughs> i'm fine with that <laughs> <laughs> um well, i'm gonna go so. this. <laughs> uh and then we'll go through so um 15 to 20 uh i got 15 Actually, uh, just gonna roll for Bruce for when Alex gets here. Good idea. Okay. All right, 10 15. 
Five to nine? Eight. Seven. Okay. Uh, Sass, re-roll. Uh, okay. Just to see if you beat Bruce. Uh, Fourteen. Okay, so you're going to... He actually, Bruce is going to go before you. Okay. I... Well, I was going I was gonna go with Shaqua into Hive in disguise to get supplies and stuff, so that's fine. That's okay. Uh and then Septimus, what'd you get? I mean do I need to tell you I'm last? No, I just wanna know. <laughs> Why'd you take a guess? One. That's right. <laughs> It's all right. It's 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 a role that's inconsequential. So we'll 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 burn. True, that here. true, true, true. It's a good it's a good way to to, to use up a, a nat one. Yes. <laughs> no, actually, what I say is Septimus catches a cold for the first week. <laughs> no. Um. Okay. Damn it. So um, I will say I do want to ask quickly. Yeah. Go ahead. Part of um what Septimus would want to do somewhat on downtime is research. So if somebody goes into the city, would we would they be able to like if they if if they were to go to the university, pick up some books just so they can bring back? Yeah, I'll say that can be part over. of like we'll go through this one at a time, but like people can you can you can talk it out in 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 it. Like so like if we you know if we are up if we're on Septimus's turn in this downtime, this is just organizational. Like when Jacquet's going, if he says, I'm going into the city, then on your you could just say, I'm gonna toss a if you coin at you and tell you to go pick up these books. Yeah, okay. Um, just because we're going in a, an initiative order doesn't mean people have to do things alone. Because yep. obviously, Sass and Septimus and Bruce, or uh, Sap, Sass, Jacquet and Bruce are going to go into the city at some point. Um, but I'm going to say just for the purposes of uh, organization, no one's going into the city in the first week. Okay. <clears throat> All cool. right. Uh, so generally speaking, weeks do we, do we know already, or are we just going to like, call we're just going to go or... based on your, cause like, that's the thing. If somebody wants to be doing like a ton of research that Got it. takes a lot of time procuring mm -hmm. magic items might take time as well. If you can't find a salesman who is selling the, what you need. Um, so some of these things just may take time where it's, you're not even necessarily doing an active thing during the, the week. You might just be, uh, or your active thing might be going in for eight hours a day and, and researching. Um, but the easiest way to to think about this is we're going to be using, uh, as we have been in the past, the Xanathar rules for a ton of stuff. Uh, so some of that, some of that stuff you might not even be able to get done in this downtime. It might be something you start in the downtime and then finish when you get back, depending on what you want to do. All right, but Fearn. Week one of this downtime. So generally speaking, vibes wise, you know, day to day, we can assume there's little to no um, complications just from your environment. Um, you are going about your day to day. What you do may have complications that come back to you, but um, we're not going to need to necessarily do things like keep a watch on the night other than what a standard watch that you would be doing. So fear in this first week, what would you be doing? I think Fearn has uh, started to enjoy his normal training in the morning, uh, you know, fighting or, you know, sparring with Balfour. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that throughout this week, he probably got to know him a little bit better and started to learn a lot from just generally his uh travel methods of being an outdoorsy person yeah and started taking an interest in it because he is used he survived out in the wilderness before mm -hmm. but it was when he was very young and he had a lot of guidance uh you know from his elders at that time so he now that he is going out into the uh you know frozen north he mm -hmm. infers that it's going to be similar to where he grew up, where it is very dangerous and yeah. decides, you know, I need to be a little bit more prepared for this. So he starts off uh, slow by training with Balfour, maybe helping him, you know, around the area and yeah. uh, 
learning about the local fauna and creatures that live here and like how to track someone. And, you know, he asks a lot of questions about things about surviving in the wilderness. Okay. Okay. So, um... uh, I, I, I think that's generally what I'm trying to do in, mm -hmm. you know, technical terms is train, uh, yes. and I'm going to get, try and get proficiency in survival. Okay. Um, so. All right. So what that's going to, this, uh, what's your intelligence modifier, by the way? Uh, my intelligence modifier is boosted from my, uh, magic item. So it's a mm -hmm. plus four. Plus four. Okay. 19 is the total. If that's what you were looking for. Uh, nope, the modifier is, is what I needed. Uh, <clears throat> so, all right, so it's going to cost you some material costs, uh, which lore-wise for all of you, obviously you don't need to go into Hyven to restock on basic goods that you might just need for here and there. It, it, part of your work week for this might just be a day trip to Fairhold to get a few supplies uh or hoping that some traveling merchant will pass on the road where you can pick up uh uh whatever's needed for the simple tasks um obviously certain <laughs> specialized things you'd have to go into hyphen for like research you could also include a little foraging in there for exactly yeah. survival yeah so uh this will be your first week of survival training with balfour he's gonna take you out you're gonna go into the, the the Raho Hills, maybe do a little hunting, even identifying plants and animals. Uh, also dealing a little bit with the cold, even though you don't need to as much as other people. He's gonna talk. He's gonna uh, hype up his whole like helping other people. So you clearly need to learn how to uh, help your friends survive of less less frigid persuasion. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it'll cost you twenty five silver. To start off okay um and you can mark down that you have one week of training completed towards uh a survival training cool um all right so, Sass. That's me. Mm -hmm. And then Jacquet and then Septimus and Bruce when Alex gets in. So week one, what you doing? Week one. Um, so I was looking at all the options on here and I mm -hmm. don't know if this would be considered training or if we would like modify this the scribing a spell scroll kind of thing to because I don't I don't do that but like I essentially want to like spend some time out in a clearing somewhere mm -hmm. and trying to like channel the 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 lightning energy that power that I had felt that one night and seeing if I can kind of like uh, like control it somehow if I can make a storm appear or if I can draw lightning to my hand if I can make it rain I don't know something <laughs> yeah okay exactly exactly so I don't know if that if what that would count <laughs> as um but so I, I, I my first instinct was training but I don't have an instructor mm. so I don't know I don't know how I don't I don't think you need an instructor. Is the force inside you. <laughs> um, Instructing the Metaclorians. You do you do uh, you you do require an instructor to some kind of instruction to do training. Um, luckily, Clay has a survivalist paladin essentially uh, here to train him in survival. Um, but it is the kind of thing that, like, if you had something that could serve in place of the instructor, it is something that you can have like, like a necklace? patron oh, like a patron <laughs> yes 
So, but what I'm going to require from you, because it's a little less straightforward than asking the completely altruistic knight who said, I'll help you do anything you want. Um, <laughs> fair, fair, fair. Um, so I'm going to ask for <clears throat> a persuasion roll. Okay. To try to, basically you're using your general magic that you already know. You're using your usual sort of attempts at speaking with her. And... Uh, to persuade her to open up a little bit and maybe help you understand the magic around you. Pretty please, I've got this fancy new rod. Now that, I don't know, maybe that'll help. I don't know. I just like to know how to do that again. That was fucking cool. A, a 19. A 19, okay. I would say in that first week, you spend the time, uh, and I'm gonna say you're still gonna incur the 25 silver cost for training. In, oh, and what what that would really <laughs> be? <have> money. <laughs> well, then you will need to ask your friends for some money, or help, <laughs> help, help. <laughs> um, uh, 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 fear will shell out. I, I also imagine that, like, I would have gotten up with you in the morning a couple of the days. I won't, not every day, but a couple of days. And one of the days while we're training, I'd be like, "Hey, fear, can I can I borrow twenty five silver from you? I probably will give it back at some point." Just not right now. It's fair. Um, I mean, you let you borrow, let me borrow money for my armor, so I don't oh, mind. Shit, I did. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> what you did with that money, I don't know. <laughs> you know, honestly, I don't know either. I kind of just give it out. <laughs> um, but I, I, you're mainly using this money on like, like random reagents. Like you're going to Fairhold and being because they do have esoteric shopper shopkeeps there. Dolvana used to be one of them, although she seems to have abandoned this to go full academic. But you could just sort of be like, oh, what is this? This is like a little like cheap, cheap uh, gemstone that costs twenty five silver. Maybe this will help me channel. But, you know, there used to be, there was we found that lightning elemental that one time. Uh, I'm gonna go and grab this, yeah. <clears throat> and maybe you spend a little bit of time hanging out. I'll say your patron is hitting the snooze alarm on this. Like every time you try to talk to her, she's like rebuffing you. She's it's not that she doesn't want to help. She just seems to like not um, she's not interested. Like she'll like anytime you talk to her, it's sort of like even the spectral energy around you seems like in the bet as much as you can say uh an aurora is like lackadaisical and lazy and sleepy yeah. it is in the way it's just sort of floating around yeah. um almost like she needs some rest after the ass kicking you all got as well <laughs> do i fucking need to be near the water when i do this come on just something just a little 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 spark it's on the last day of the week that you're working on this when you're frustrated and you're walking down the road uh from fairhold um after you desperately were bought bought a little little gem to try to facilitate this that you would see along the road what colloquially and you've started to hear this while you're wandering around is the herald's great sword which is you know Fearn's great sword that melted into the, the earth upon the release of the storm uh, elemental um, and it's as you get close to this that there's a you can smell the ozone in the air. There's a there's just an inherent static charge to this space. You get there and you just sort of slowly bring your finger out and you just see a arc of lightning touch to your finger. Your whole hand goes numb. <laughs> um, but uh, you sort of stand there for a second and then kind of, I imagine a few times, maybe even like try to do yeah. it again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Come on. Come on. Uh, like a little kid trying to use the force. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 100%. Um, before uh, you would actually see the Aurora come out and sort of start to swirl around the, the sword for a moment and then back into your hand. And you don't, you, it's like everything with your patron confusing. Um, but you feel like you've made progress. So you can mark one week down on uh, what I will determine what actually is later. Uh, <laughs> lightning elemental training. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right. Jackie Touche. 
So, um, I think Jacquet, he's not comfortable with uh, procuring supplies in such a rural environment. But you know what he is interested in? Is going to some fancy manors and estates and seeing if he can uh, find some goods to fence. So he's going to do some crime in the countryside. Ooh, uh, okay. Targeting okay. those uh, country estates. Mm -hmm. of folks like it would be great if uh if Cadmus had a had a state <laughs> out here i don't think that's in the cards but he's gonna you know go around and spend the week crime basically uh yeah and looking yeah. for the nicest states i imagine closer to the city uh but there still has to be some out there yes i like this we um, need to go near the shore. That's where the rich people hang out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, the basalt cliffs. Yeah, right. Um, all right, so uh, that will cost you the 25 silver pieces to prepare such a uh, a crime. Right. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we'll do a, a crime crime check. So we can do those three checks. Your stealth check, um, your tools check, your thieves tools check and then mm -hmm. your choice of investigation perception or deception um with stealth will i have the advantage from the cloak of elven kind i'm fine if you say no but if you say yes i appreciate that so the cloak of elven kind is uh sound right sight sight um so, yeah no i'd still give it to you because i right. imagine the idea of the money you're spending on on gain gathering information is also gathering like best way to approach and you can pick okay. the one that is being remaining visually hidden is best for him. so let's get that right. stealth check uh so stealth is 31 mm -hmm. um and then just e20 for tools uh 18 plus 2 plus 4 plus 4 oh so 28 for the thieves tools Jeez. And then deception mm -hmm. is gonna be a twenty-five. This 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 guy is roguing properly. Um, I did roll pretty hot, so yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, so <clears throat> you pull off a fencing heist. Uh, super successfully uh you're able to find a countryside manor uh not too far south of uh fairhold um closer to the city uh that is likely a country estate for uh once you're in there sneaking around and mm -hmm. then also like the information you you pulled from uh from some folks uh is essentially this is like this is an academic manner. Uh, this is someone who's pretty wealthy from the academy. You can you sneak in there, very lovely estate. No one's there. Like you sneak right. in and you're immediately. It's like as you're doing that thirty-one stealth check. It's like you get past the walls, you get to the door, and you realize there's not a soul here. Um, you're able to use your tools to disarm any magical traps that might be here, uh, and then you're able to deceive the one groundskeeper that's there sure. to say that you are there on behalf of the uh academy to pick something up for whoever the academic is uh Thanks. and you are able to fence a interesting artifact you have no idea what it is it buzzes like a bee's nest uh but it seems to be an urn of some kind you don't ask any questions as you fence it for 200 silver pieces 200 mm-hmm Sean, I wonder what that's for. <laughs> I'm just going to write this info down, though, because it might. Okay. This is a good adventure prompt later on, potentially. Yeah. <laughs> that is the fun thing about the um, structured semi-improvised downtime, is it creates interesting potentials for later on. Yeah. Any? Do you want me to roll complication? Uh, you don't have to, technically. Oh, okay. uh, you only roll complications if you only succeed on one of your three checks. Ah, that's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. Ooh, 
Cool. And that was a noble level robbery. Ding. I would say Cadmus, if you did find out his estate, would be considered one of the richest figures in town. Uh, yeah. Fences, but. All right, we are going to go. Oh, actually, no. Septimus. Yeah. What are you doing during this first week? Uh, honestly, really not a whole lot. He'll probably take this time to just get reacquainted with some of the people he knows in the area that are coming to help the house and mm -hmm. just kind of focusing on that. Just really going back to his simple life, kind of just putting into perspective like what happened in Hyphen, dying, and just kind of like collecting his mind because that's mm -hmm. all I can kind of think about right now. So I'd say really not much um, as far as worth, I guess, rolling. No training, no no research or anything. Just, I guess the only progression could be just fixing up the house. Yeah, which I'm going to say because there's enough people providing resources for that, there's no need to necessarily roll on that. Um, <clears throat> generally speaking, uh, with the current rate of fixing up the house, it is something where the house will be uh, essentially back to its previous state within uh, 10 weeks of just minor uh, work each day. Um, what I would say you could do if you would like is uh, spend 10 silver to just sort of socialize with some of these folks and count it as carousing to potentially gain a few um, NPC contacts. Yeah, no, for sure. All right, so 10 silver pieces, and you can give me a charisma roll. And this will be considered carousing with um, uh, lower class folks. Whoa. This is their lower class. Well, the 10 silver he's spending. He could spend 50 silver <laughs> to carouse okay. with some middle class people if he'd like. That's just a, uh, just a charisma roll? Uh, persuasion. Persuasion. Mm -hmm. oh, it's Low in class, high in heart. Exactly. Eleven. Eleven. Okay. So what I'll say is you've made a, a good impression on your neighbors. Um, and where they have been providing you with services uh, as a community effort, you've now gained, uh, be it besides Granny Lani, uh, one additional sort of allied contact amongst the countryside of your neighbors. Someone who is a little more than just a communal neighbor helping out. Someone who... You know, you maybe one of the nights particularly they stay. That guy for, with the good, uh, with the good food, the, the good the, spices, the yeah. yeah, the spice man. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll give you a little more detail about who that is. Um, it, actually, using a Fairhold NPC is probably a good measure for it to give you someone interesting because you know they're a little more than farmers. Um, mm -hmm. so. Just keep in your notes, though, that you have acquired one lower class ally in the countryside. And this is not just something that can be useful for this can be useful for anything. It's the kind of thing where it's like you now have a I know a guy in the countryside. Sure. Sure. So like if your guys are facing a problem, I'd even be comfortable with you it within reason being like, I know a guy who can help us with that. And you can kind of keep that as a as like a kind of a coin in your back pocket. Right. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Candy. Yeah, I actually like that better than me assigning you an NPC for it because we can make it can be something that can be creatively used later on. Mm -hmm. Um, so so bold it in your notes that you have that so we don't forget about it. <laughs> Will do. Um. All right, we're gonna go to a quick break so we can pull Alex in here, um, and get his downtime, and then uh, continue on to the next part. Uh. All right, we'll be. Oh, God. Right we'll be, be back shortly. Sorry, I just noticed David saying that he lived in the Raho Hills back in 2013. <laughs> anyway, uh, all right, we'll be back. Bye. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for sticking around with us. Sorry if you got lost in the little uh, stream error where it closed our stream when we went to a break. Uh, stream Labs. Um, but, uh, before break, we were doing some downtime activities. Um, we are going to finish the first week of downtime now with Bruce 
and what Bruce would like to do during this week. What would Bruce like to do during this week? Um, so we're hanging out in Septimus's abode. Um, mm -hmm. I'd uh, really like to go back down to Septimus's basement, take out some chalk, and draw a circle. Ooh. For the entire week. <laughs> <laughs> it's very slowly. Um, yeah. It's a very accurate circle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I'd like, yeah, I'd like to see if I can install the teleporter and I imagine like <clears throat> Bruce, like every so often will contact Selena and be like, um, how do I, how does this, what do I do here? <laughs> 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 And Did there's several the instruction manual. There's usually uh, instruction manual. Several moments where Selena is just you can you can like audibly hear her like slap her forehead somehow through the sending spell. <laughs> Before she's like, I've told you this a million times, Bruce. You have to go around. You have to and and just goes into an explanation of how to use it. And it all breaks down to like I included. She'll say at one point, the first time you call, she's like, I included a little tiny uh folded piece of paper. Inside the, the, the container with the chalk, you may have missed it. That has nice little instructions on it on how to how to do this. Uh, it's in her um, uh, her really really fine print handwriting. Uh, yeah. So it's it's a little difficult One of those to read. Note takers. Yep, for sure, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> she had to do it from learning from her mother's books. She had to. It makes sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm gonna. So, uh, just to clarify, so Bruce, there was a previous time where Bruce went down to Septimus's basement. Mm -hmm. um, he made, he used mold earth to literally just make a hole in the wall in Septimus's basement that uh, leads down to, uh, and I want to, for the, all the extra time, maybe it didn't, it only takes a day to really install this teleporter, um, but everything around the teleporter or the room that contains the teleporter, uh, teleportation circle, um, Bruce would be working on for the entire. Um, uh, so, in this basement, hole in the wall. I imagine there's like some steps down, mm -hmm. and then there's just like a like a circular room that's like yeah. relatively dark. Um, maybe a lit by like some very simple enchantments that Bruce knows that like little like tiny flames like little green flames mm -hmm. um, make it look <clears throat> aesthetically pleasing yeah uh, like stone around the outside of this little uh, that's like what circle. you're using a bunch of the time during the week I imagine it's almost yeah. like you are playing Valheim and making your your portal room you got it Sean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, like Bruce is going for like a little ominous theme because it's in Septimus's basement yeah um, and uh, of course, you know, in Septimus's basement, he also needs like a secret door to yeah. the teleporter room. So he's gonna get one of like uh, one of those uh, an armoire. He's got an armoire in the basement. Yeah. And uh, I'm pretty positive I mentioned an armoire the last time we we talked, where you saw a bunch of his old family stuff and got sad. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I'm gonna have that be like in front of the door yeah yeah and bruce will put some like things in place to make sure everything kind of looks um there's no evident or evidence that it is like a sliding yeah armor yeah. or, 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 or it could be yeah used. um give me a uh a tool check for that i'd say hell yeah sean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So I imagine in combination with your tools, you can also like you're maybe using a little bit of a mold earth spell to keep, you know, move, move that the door around a little, make sure it's perfect. Yeah. Oh, it's a 27. I'm going to add five to that. For a okay. 32. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's so you do such a good job, Bruce, that at one point you forget where the door is <laughs> before, <laughs> before you remember the little, whatever notch, whatever, like, signal you put in there to 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 make sure you don't forget where it is but right. you've sealed it off basically with like 
natural stuff that's in his basement, the different things he has there. So it would be pretty hard to find if someone was like looking through here. Um, you know, if someone just destroyed everything in the room, of course they'd probably find it. But uh, but someone just doing a respectful search, it's not gonna find it. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, that's my week. All right, all right. So week one comes to a close with uh, with fear and out in the woods with Balfour learning how to survive. Uh, Septimus uh, getting to know his neighbors a bit more, working on the house and contemplating his his uh, death situation. Um, Sass is trying to become a lightning lord, a lightning uh, bender, um, lightning lady. Lightning Lady, Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> and lightning has seen though. some minor success there. Jacquet heisted a buzzing urn and hocked it for two hundred silver. Uh, uh, if if I may add something, just flavor wise, absolutely. Uh, wherever Jacquet had like scattered out this location, I imagine you know it's like a hill with a tree on it that overlooks the estate. Yeah. Uh, he would have in thieves' cant carved in. Um, like something that's basically like, this is an easy score. Easy, yeah. And then signed it with his new brand. In Ooh. LR. Ooh. Okay. It's a little stylized, so, so no one can tell. But he puts in a little uh, LR. Um, Zorro style. <laughs> I like that. Huh? Zorro style. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he probably carves it in with a claw or something, but. The point is, is that he's going to start leaving notes in Thieves' Cant and signing them all as LaRue so that, you know, anyone that starts to see them will recognize that symbol. And I like it. I like it a lot. All right. Um, but the first week comes to a close. Bringing us to the 12th of Novum. Wouldn't it be the eleventh? It was the fourth. Well, I guess did we start on the Mondog or the the Tuesday? Tuesday. You start on the Tuesday, okay. yeah. You got gotcha. to you got to the farm on the Mondog, and then we had a one overnight. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, da, da, da. Um, each. Each and every day, uh, the, the weather gets a little bit colder and colder. Uh, the snow is tame. You know, the worst you get is that same flurry that you got the other day um, with the occasional ghost night involved where you start to see that spectral ghost um, and everything feels a little, little off, a little weird. Um, particularly during these early winter months. Um, but the week comes to a close and uh, we can go into another round of downtime for the second week. We're gonna reverse our initiative as Clay suggested over break. Um, but before we do the initiative, if anyone wants to talk about collaborating during this week, we can do that quickly now. But to give everyone an idea, it would be Septimus, Jacquet, Sass, Bruce, Fearn. Uh, my only thing is if anybody's going into town to pick up some uh, books or anything from the academy potentially to borrow that Septimus may research for where we're going um, the like landmarks similar to like the well uh, Sass saw when she was scrying on Fionn's brother um, and I guess uh, dangerous animals or creatures that may be encountered uh, that would cost 50 silver pieces for okay. research materials. I will, I will prompt that. And remember to do... Um, any other discussions of collaboration? Uh, Bruce would probably want to collaborate with Jacquette on getting 
into Hyven. Um, as uh, mm -hmm. Jaquet or Stefan previously mentioned to me while we were off camera, um, that uh, he's got a disguise kit maybe ready for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, would like to apply that to maybe get into the academy to then procure the goods to do research or get uh, books for Septimus as well while he's there. And I would also talk to the, the two of them, the group that's, or, I, or the group um, as a whole, like what kind of supplies we're going to need, what to be looking for, because I can disguise myself as well and I can come in and help get things. If this is going to be your supply run, it may be a good idea to discuss your shopping list. Right. What do we need? I shall write it down. Uh, well, I'm starting to think that we could do some of the shopping right now, but no. Septimus and I should probably do some research first on what we need to, or we're going to encounter. And then we can make a proper list. So let's make a rough list right now, and then we'll add on to it as time. Sounds good? I will say a definite, though. I mean, we do know that it's very cold up there. So if you want to grab some furs or some cloaks, anything to keep us uh, warmer blood folk looking to find uh, warm. I have been hunting. Um, I might be able to collect some furs. Perfect. Um, uh Rations, uh, dried meats. Uh... We'll pick up foodstuffs before we leave. We don't need it expiring before then. Um, but one thing that we do need to figure out eventually is booking passage. Again, that might be best left until last minute, just so no one knows um, about our movements. I was, in terms of... Uh, weathering the cold, I was thinking there are a number of magic items that are fairly uncommon, but still common enough mm -hmm. uh, that we might be able to make use of. But I can work to procure those specifically. If, Saskia, you want to get some of the more mundane material. Sure. If, maybe well, we yeah. should, uh, 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 like, maybe some health potions also? You know, just... Mm. I don't know. Uh, yeah, probably. And, uh... Hmm. Toe warmers. Yeah. I like the health potion toe, idea. Toe warmers. Yeah, yeah you, you don't have toe warmers? <laughs> I don't wear shoes, so... <laughs> <laughs> we should start. Uh, I think probably the, need the... some, like, rope, maybe. Uh, I don't know how much, uh... Elevation will be traversing, and not all of us can um, teleport. Like these two sneaky folk. Fear might also be. Sorry, just real quick, Fearn, Could you give me a quick survival check? Oh no! <laughs> I know you're not proficient yet, but I am going to give you advantage on this one because we're talking about a cold climate, and you're from a cold climate. Uh, okay. I got a seventeen. Okay. So just to like give you kind of confirmations and some of the things that you're talking about for the cold climate um, from if it's anything like you imagine the cold climate to be Fearn, you know, based on the fact that you have a human brother who had to live amongst cold resistant tieflings that um, what they're talking about with magic items is like the easiest fix um, a cold resistance magic item. It helps you out significantly. You can also buy specialized clothes that will help you out um, if you're not cold resistant. Um, it's just that's a little bit more cumbersome, not great for fighting. Uh, a magical item is is best to keep someone good, but you know that you can subside with the types of heavy clothing that Hornless would wear. Yeah, if you're um, not planning on sneaking anywhere, it's probably the cheaper alternative. Yes. Um, and then... Uh, the other thing that you know is useful are um, uh, sometimes our specialized boots for this types of weather. Snowshoes, oh, one might say. Snowshoe. Okay. Um, as well as um, 
uh, potential similarly, or you can go the other route of a specialized boot to help with climbing. A uh, boot that would have like a somewhat of like a, a way to kick it into the ice to, to help you climb. Um, sure. uh, would also be useful potentially. But there's a ton of different things you can find, but generally mm -hmm. you know that this uh, for all intents and purposes this is going to have uh, our... Possibly hit them with the sunscreen because of the reflection off the snow. Of course. Uh, we are going to be using the extreme, <laughs> extreme cold rules for the north. Uh, which means you do want to either get specialized cold weather gear or resistance or immunity to cold damage to help you with staving off exhaustion. Um, uh, I would also probably suggest if there's a blizzard, maybe some face masks mm -hmm. and maybe all white for camo. Ooh. That would be difficult to do with uh, the furs that I'm collecting. Probably. We could paint them white, you know. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Fearn would relay this information uh, to uh, Joquette uh, to, I guess, purchase similar things. And I, I even like draw a little bit of a snowshoe equivalent of like something that I'd probably have used in the past. Maybe uh, it looks more like uh, the talons of a bird sort of thing, where I have like uh, sticks extending out in like Good. three prongs Clinton, can you draw it in ms paint for us so we know <laughs> sure i can do that <laughs> yeah uh i'm I, i'm happy to go shopping for all this but i have no money so i'm gonna i'm gonna uh how much do you think you need i, I actually don't know how much these things cost <laughs> well uh, we can we'll give, figure it out that, i'm sure we'll at get, the end we'll get think... a receipt and i'll give you the money okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm fine um, with, with it being like you figuring out the collective money Venmo. spent later. <laughs> yeah, everyone can Venmo SAS, and then SAS will have that debt to everyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I will. I'm also... not forgetting about what she she already uh, owes yeah. me. Uh, twenty five. Whoever I ask for money from, I'm gonna ask for twenty five silver more than I need because I'm going to attempt to do more lightning Bruce will give it shit. To her. Thanks. Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> Sorry, I took it from fear. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does um, that mean I gave you 50 retroactively? <laughs> no. No. Mm. I still gave you 25. Okay. Sathemus will also look to Jaquette and, like, with a serious face back. Perhaps it may also be wise to pick up a good amount of diamonds for a little bit of life insurance. Yeah. If that's uh, fair, I can make sure that that's taken care of. Uh, I know a guy. Yeah, I, I don't know. What else is in the north? <laughs> I imagine when we get there, if we go the route of... um, What's the city called? The capital... Uh, there were a few of them. Uh, there's... Smalto and Sicanto? Smalto and Sicanto. Smalto's the, um... The, well, like, no, traditional yeah. capital. Um... But Smalto, so if we took a boat up, Smalto would be the one we go to? Or Sicanto? One moment. Let me... Get there's you the three exact options, answer right? instead of just yes. In the south. We can either take the land route, which mm -hmm. we're not going to do. Uh, we can take a boat to one of or near one of the capitals, or we can take a boat all the way up and then try to come in from the north. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were yeah. going to go stop at the capital because we're right. afraid if we do the full way up, we're just going to get wrecked like the guy we're trying to save. So exactly. where you would yeah. want to. Uh, approach is Sercanto because okay. it is uh, it's not in like a uh, it's a, along a river so you can um, uh, take a boat there, get off and then follow the river to it um, since the boats would be too big to, to get to 
the area itself, but there's there is like a docking area there. This is the only place that has like a significant population in it. Right. Uh, everywhere else is abandoned or occupied by like people who just refuse to leave those areas or who are trying to be like this place is abandoned, so let's fight here or use this space that is massive and no one cares about. So we can get a decent amount of supplies here, but we will have a chance to resupply in Sercanto before we head into the northern wastes. So if we forget anything, it's not a huge issue. And who knows, we can learn something along the way, I'm sure. Also, since I have my little tiny house that I can put up, well, I won't have to worry about uh, sleeping conditions or sleeping in the snow. Right. Which is good. Um, yeah, the, the other, there's either going in over land, which would require you to traverse heavy mountains. Um, the Circanto path is what's available by sea closest. And then the other one was the Crisaltos path, which is you go to the more heavily populated Crisaltos islands, which are, have a lot more people oh, in them. Yeah. Um, and are not, uh, as cold, um, despite being further north than the Gosu Hunt. Um, to then take a path from the north down south. Uh, but you were going to, I believe the only other thing that you had mentioned wanting to do to figure out which way to go was someone did want to research volcanoes in the Gosu Haunt to figure out which path would be the closest to that, potentially. Because um, the only thing you have to go off of is that there was a active volcano and he was he did he was on a shore and his ship had crashed. Right. Okay. So week two begins. Aw. Uh, <laughs> uh we'll start with Septimus and then we'll go to the city folks and then go to Fearn. So, so the beginning part of this week, uh since People will be traveling on Ivan, have to wait for them to go there, do their thing, and come back. Uh, Septimus would like to spend some time tinker with that gun attachment that mm -hmm. him and I, Bruce, worked on and kind of getting that fully operational um, or try to get that fully operational. Absolutely. So give me... everything <laughs> um. Crap. okay uh so um <laughs> you have your tool proficiencies we don't need to worry about that uh do you have uh some scrap that you're going to be using to tinker this with this i mean you already have the gun so it's not like you need to create the weapon but is there anything you're using uh, within your inventory or within your scrapyard? Anything specific? Uh... I mean, I imagine you have a ton of stuff, but at some point we're going to need to deplete that with the amount of things you've been making at your, your yeah. as you keep making yeah. stuff. So what I, I'll say is you, since you already have the weapon, you don't need to procure like the full weapons value to make it. I'm just going to say we're going to utilize 50 silver worth of scrap um you have scrap still at your base so i'll yeah. say that doesn't you don't have to spend 50 silver to do this um Thank but i'm going time. to determine before next stream i'll say how much how value much scrap have you have left in your scrap yard that you've acquired over you know a long time um yeah uh but it is going to take some time though to yep. to get this finished um sure just but starting that process give me a uh tools check of your 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 uh your wish because uh, this is mostly cool. crafted already we're just making it the final touches on and then it. i guess tinkers tools yeah We can this say intelligence plus. Oh, oh, yeah, intelligence plus your proficiency. Uh, 
Just brainly to see if you can get it done in a week. That is a 17. 17, my friend. Okay. You are able to get this gun fully working uh, oh. with your with your arm in this week. Because the thing is, okay. gold value-wise, if you were making this from scrap, scratch, yeah. would have would have cost a lot more weeks. But you have the gun. There's already time spent on attaching it to your arm. Um, so a week to basically finalize it. Because you and and as you're going through it, Septimus, you realize as you're like looking at the arm, you're like, wow, Bruce really, really just kind of jankily got this in here. <laughs> How's he doing? <laughs> you need to really convince me to believe more. <laughs> um and uh and with your your faith, uh suddenly the 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 weapon is is working with your shoulder arm. Uh and yeah, so that's all set. Um, awesome. Yep, and we have used 50 silver worth of scrap from your scrap pile. I will determine the remaining value you have. Thank you. Alrighty. City crew. Let's do this. Yo. Um, technically, the order is Jacquette, Sass, and Bruce, but since you're all doing the same thing, well, relatively the same thing. We can go through it where it's like, what do you do in the city, Jacquette? Sass, what do you do in the city? And then we can say, Bruce, what do you do in the city? Uh, so, Jacquette, you also, I actually would also like um, a description of everyone's disguises for fun. Um, so, Jacquette, what did you make, Bruce? Jacquette, for Bruce, uh, made a very... It's a it's a farmhand outfit. Like it smells slightly of manure. Um for added taste, he takes, you know, just some dirt and rubs it on the not actual taste, uh scales. And he's got one of those uh like workers caps uh that he puts on Bruce. Like a flat uh, cap. Yeah. Um and uh it's it's really not you know, Jacquette goes by the, you know, you want to be uh, nondescript. Mm -hmm. So he works as hard as he can to make what is normally a not nondescript, you know, someone that stands out. Uh, he's worked to try to rein uh, in Bruce's exotic appearance. So it's just very bland, a lot of tans and browns uh, with a darker cap um, and sunglasses. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Imagine little round ones. Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> the pince nez or whatever they're called. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you pronounce it. Yeah, it's made cool. Pince nez. <laughs> Isn't time. Uh, and what is Jacquette's disguise? Uh, he's going the same. I same think thing. it was a, a half elf um, that mm -hmm. he had been when he approached Reardon. So yeah. he's going to keep that disguise traveler. while he's, yeah, just a generic like Gwen Valeri traveler. Love it. Sass? Granny Brian. Uh, um, really like uh, tattered brown like robe slash hood thing. Green skin, old wrinkly, stringy gray hair. Got a big nose with a wart on the end and these like long yellow fingernails and some fangs. Just real old looking and okay <laughs> and as a note i think we would have just taken the horses not the full carriage that's right ease of use um uh yeah i was gonna ask that so yeah you can take your horses in i imagine you're gonna cast your disguised selves before like right before you go into the city um mm -hmm. just keep yourselves generally hidden with cloaks before that um so that you have the hour Get where you need to right. go. Um, you get to the city, no problem. Uh, I, as it always is, bustling. Um, maybe a little quieter because of the winter. People are just generally not outside as much. Closer to the water here, there's not really any snow. The weather's balmy, but not as bad as you get further inland. Um, it's more of that cold and rainy versus that calm snowy. 
uh, cold. Uh, and however your character might feel about this, having left, it just feels like Hyphen completely forgot about you as you're walking in. Just like the city's exactly the same. There's no like devastating cries for the no one being like, where's I am the man? Um, as far as you can see, just walking the streets. Uh, you turn the, turn the dagger a little harder. <laughs> um, you uh, okay? You walk in, and there's a minstrel show where they're making fun of Iron and Mana <laughs> for their defeat. Um, no, uh, you get to the um, uh, the Admiralty Court. Um, do you have any, how are you approaching this part? It's typically you walk in with your papers. So, I mean, Jacques leaving this up to Bruce. He's going to go. Oh, that's right. Bruce is the one going items. up there. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So wants. then now that also, okay. Then now that we're in, Jacques will go in the order. <laughs> Jacques, what are you doing at this point? Uh, yeah. Jacques hunting for magic items. Um, Probably won't go to the De Leon brothers. We'll go somewhere a okay. little more established. Sure, sure. Um. Um. Okay. So, what are you looking for? So, the best thing that Jacquet would want to get is um three <coughs> pairs of boots of the hinterland. Winterland. Hinter. Yeah. Winter. 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 Mm -hmm. Winter lens. These uh, would serve as the same thing as the, the snow boots I mentioned as well. Right. If we couldn't get three, uh, then what? however, you know, however many he can get, he would then make up for with rings of warmth. Okay. Um, I will ask you... You can either do a check to find these, or you can mm -hmm. spend money to find them. So it costs. Uh... Actually, let me double check. This. Costs a hundred. Hundred silver. Yeah. Uh, to spend on searching for the item. Right. Um. If it's a check, what kind of check are we talking? So the if you're spending money. The check is to determine the quality of the item. Okay. Um, if you're not spending money, then you are doing a um, essentially a carousing check to to seek it out. But a uh, so you would be doing the same. It's basically the same check. It's just one is a higher DC than the other. So you'd be doing a persuasion check to carouse about. Now this is the thing, though. They are both take up the week because you're looking for it. So it's the kind of thing where if you fail the check for the carousing one, you don't find the item or you only find you maybe only find one uh, instead of all of them. If you spend money, you'll find as many are available in the city. Um, all right. And, and then you'll have Jack Watch is going to spend the money. OK, I don't doubt his ability, but, you know, he would rather get exactly what he wants. Than mm -hmm. risk yeah. It. Essentially what it would be is like the, you know, the contacts part of carousing is like how many right. of them you find kind of thing. Um, all right. So a hundred silver um, and you'll be able to find a seller who has uh, what you need. Um, so still give me that charisma persuasion check. 28. 28, okay. So you are able to find a seller who specializes in winter goods, who sells out of the Whistling Mountain Potion Company. He's sort of a vendor there who comes during winter and is selling these types of goods specifically for people coming out of Hyven, going into more northern territories during the winter, research uh, folks who are going off to areas where they might need this, this, uh, these goods. Um, and you are able to find his last three pairs of boots of the one. Oh, yeah. 
with a 28. And he's like, so much so that you're like, uh, he's hesitant to sell you them all at first because it's early in winter. Um, mm -hmm. But then he's like, uh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, I'll get rid of all my product for you. Um, so uh, these are uncommon items. He oh, is... Geez. The reasonable cost is 200. That is true. The reasonable cost would be 200. Um, I'm going to ask you to give me another persuasion roll, though, here. Um, 22. He's, he's a advantageous seller. His entire his entire thing is you you need boots of Winterland. I have them. I I don't need them. It would just be nice, you know. I just don't want to get tripped up. <laughs> uh, but with both those persuasion rolls in consideration, um, you are able to talk him down, especially because you're buying all three at once. Um, okay. From his original asking price, which was exorbitant, truly, um, he was trying to really get the the twist on you trying to sell them 400 silver each mm -hmm. uh he'll sell them to you for the reasonable price of 200 silver each okay so 600 yep there's no like i to get one half off or anything uh i am giving you best discount possible best discount possible do you want I to spend do you want to spend 250 believe, silver on but, them 250 you know, silver each okay okay here you go my okay, friends okay okay i recommend the the rock candy on the way out jacquette buys a rock candy for bruce <laughs> that's two copper <laughs> um I might get a smooch in the leg later <laughs> <laughs> um so i mean like that that sort of like procurement takes up a lot of your time, like making sure you mm -hmm. get these items, but you can do casual shopping uh, amidst that. Like you don't need to be doing a check or spend money to find health potions, that kind of stuff. Um, Jacquette would like to bring the dire minx pelt that mm -hmm. Fjern gave him as a gift to somewhere in the Admiralty court mm -hmm. to have it commissioned into a nice cloak. Or like mm -hmm. a wrapper, like something yeah, something you're not just draping. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, that can be worn, um, and then yeah, I guess I'll uh, look for uh, health potions. Uh, so to look for health potions, you wouldn't even need to leave uh, the shop that you bought the candy. Okay, because it's a it's that's the main potion sales place, right? Um, so you can buy as many potions as you would like at their health potions at their standard price. Uh, what's the standard price of a greater healing? A greater, um, greater is a good question. Greater standard price is 200 gold each. Okay. Uh, I'm, how much, how... Jacquette's starting to get tapped out here. <laughs> um, let me do some quick math. I got to convert my platinums and gold. Ugh, gross. There are quite problems, am I right? Yeah. All right, so with two platinum, I could get two greater healing potions. The platinum is 10 gold, which is 20 silver. Yep. So that's one platinum is worth 200 silver. Mm -hmm. uh, so he'll spend the two platinum uh, for two greater. Uh, and then what do people have for coinage and how many potions should I be getting? Zero, baby. 
Um, okay. I have I have, a, I have a good amount of silver. I have two hundred silver pieces left. <clears throat> I have a thousand. hundred. Yeah, I have a thousand three hundred sixty. I have how many? I have five hundred silver. Uh, uh, minus some training money. Jacquet, I need to. I'm gonna modify that cost for the graders. So I just okay. looked up Xanathar's guide for it, which is slightly uh, slightly less. Um, okay, it's 100 gold per grader. Oh, okay, so just one platinum spent. Yep. Um, how many healing potions do we want, and do we want more graders? I don't think we need a whole lot of graders. I mean, I think it's simple. Okay. Simple potions will, will do the trick. How many of those would be like? I would say maybe six. Make it an even number. So that's it's 50 gold or 50 silver a piece for normal. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Um, so it's 300. Okay. I can do that. Okay. Um, so that's all Jacquette's going to do. And then... Uh, how many potions in total did you get? So two greater healing potions and mm -hmm. six regular potions of healing. Uh, sir, would you like to buy two more potions to raise your total to ten? If you buy ten potions, you get to put a free hand in the grab a potion barrel. Damn it, Sean. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's a hundred silver pieces to it? Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, sure. What's a hundred silver pieces to a Gwenvalorian elf like myself? <laughs> Very good, you sir. Two more regular? Yeah, so I'll just do two more regular. And you see he, he puts this nice, uh, like, silk bag together that holds all your potions in it uh, carefully so they don't get damaged, hands it to you, and then he says, Right over here, sir, you can put your hand in and grab a random potion. They are unlabeled. Can I sleight of hand and take two? Give me a sleight of hand check. Yes, sir. Amazing. These are completely randomized potions. Nice. Perfect. 29. Nice. Yeah, you could definitely get two. Cool. I will let you all know in a second which, what they look like. Uh, one of them is the when you look at it and sort of shake it is a nearly frozen liquid um, that's gray in color. Uh, now again, these do not come with instructions. These do not come with any knowledge of what they do. They are mm -hmm. grab a bag potions. You figure it out when you drink it or when you have someone else drink it or you smash it, anything like that. You can't like potentially identify with a successful you can. arcana. Okay. You can with with any kind of like you you can take time to do a, your own alchemical test of it uh, sure. or attempt. Um, and then the other one um, <clears throat> looks like this very like voluminous blue. It's like almost like glows and almost glitters. Um, and there's a, a lock of what looks like sort of silver hair that's just flowing in it. Cool. Yeah, you got two, two, two free potions. Hell yeah. I'll have Septimus and Bruce deal with that. I like this potion generator I just found because they're not, there's no descriptions of their actual effects, it just is visuals. And yeah. one, of, one of them that came up was a coconut sealed with a cork. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, cool. All right. Anything else, Jacquette, for your week within. Hive it. How much would it cost for a 
the dire mink yes the dire cloak. mink cloak services one moment sir are you gonna get the diamonds too jacquet oh yes yeah we'll just add it all to the list Uh, it would cost you uh, 30 silver to get the cloak fashioned in fashioned. <clears throat> and that's mostly because it's a, f a fine material and you need to go to a fine tailor to right to make it. Uh, what tailor shop do I go to? I believe I mentioned one earlier in the campaign that I don't have off the top of my head. The one that that's Sass fine. got the nice... Um, hat for you from but I imagine Did it would you be go the, to a hatter uh, I have that written down that's true hatter. it probably wouldn't be a tailor it would be a what's the word for haberdasher haberdasher it would have been a haberdasher but it would have been like a a fine a clothing clothier store that has mm -hmm. a haberdasher on retainer of uh, course <laughs> I'm a haberdasher. haberdasher. There you are. Uh, uh, Mrs. Brass Drops Luxury Style is where you went. Okay. Mm -hmm. and Mrs. Brass Drop is a... Uh, uh, you got to meet her, Mrs. Brass Drop herself. She is a short and uh, round bronze dragon. Dragonborn, not dragon. <laughs> just squeezed into a little shop yeah a full dragon yeah like if you can imagine like the the physique of like an old grandma but it's a, i can a bronze dragon born instead beautiful uh and she loves fashion um don't we all she has no skills herself in how to make clothes but she loves uh designing them in fashion she talks just like uh meryl streep in the devil wears prada anyway uh, anything else, Shaquet? And thus, I end my turn. Saskia. Yes, that's me. What would right. you like to do? So, um, first, I have, there's three things. The first thing, uh, I want to look for all the, quote, mundane things that Jacquet said <laughs> I was going to look for. So that would be, uh, like, cold weather gear, the face masks, um, uh, let's see, what else, what else? Toe warmers for Bruce. Um, and what was the other one? Um, oh, I know we said we were going to get rations later, but I'll just get, like, a week's worth for everybody just so we have something to start us off and I'll make sure that they're like not perishable like jerky and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. shit that it for mundane yes that's all I have for mundane do you got diamonds right Jack but for your yeah 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 okay so yep yeah, just those mundane things okay uh, da, 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 da. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. the week's worth of rations mm -hmm. will cost you three silver per person or total per person three because it's one 17. day's worth of rations for one person is one silver essentially all right hang on i gotta keep track of i'm sorry two it's two days worth of rations is one silver okay mm -hmm. So that's going to be 15. I'm keeping track because somebody else is paying for it. Uh, oh, my God. Remind me of my own freaking silver system. It's how many uh, silvers per gold did I say? 10. 20. 10. Cool. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. Okay. 20. Okay. okay. Uh, sorry. 100. <laughs> and then it's 10 copper to a silver like it normally is. Okay. Yes. Then what I said is correct. It is okay. one silver for two days of rations. All right. And five so copper for one day, I guess you could say. Fuck. Okay. So then if I wanted to get seven days. Oh, seven days, it would be three five. silver and five copper each. Three silver. 
five copper per person. Okay, so that's going to be 15, nope, 21 silver pieces and... Fuck. I'll do the math later. Okay. But yeah. Um, Generally, it's five copper for a day's of ration, a day of rations. Okay. Is if right. if you just want to go off of copper. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. So I'll then get convert the it later. The silver. <laughs> yeah. I'll con yeah. 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 So I'll get those. So um, it was one, two, three, four, five. Five. So, yeah. five. so I'll, I'll twenty-five copper that. for one day of rations for the party. Well, I was gonna do seven days, not five. No, I was just saying. Oh, okay. If you wanted to think of it as the party, it's 25 copper for one day of rations for the whole party. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, toe warmers for Bruce. Toe warmers for Bruce. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> I don't think he needs those with the He does. does. Yes, he does. Got to keep those cold toe beans I'm warm. Committed. Yep. No, oh, Sasuke, you said you wanted warmers. them. Sasuke is going to find them for you. Yeah, thank you. Sasuke. I mean, Granny Brian is going to find them for you. <laughs> I am looking for these uh, toe warmers. Are they uh, around somewhere that I could purchase them? Uh... <laughs> I imagine like the uh the people would be like What the hell are toe warmers? <laughs> exactly like they sound, they warm your toes. You mean are you talking about socks? No Are you no, talking about socks? No, I'm not talking about socks. I'm talking about these like you like warm them up and you stick them in your shoes. Maybe you stick them in your socks too to make your to make your toes warm. They're like magically heated. Or to keep them piggies toasty. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like some magic shit. Uh, I got socks here. If you want, you I can put some hot stones socks. in them before you put them on. Hot stones. You That's know, all put, you had to say. Thank put, you. Have a day. You, yeah, you know, rocks <laughs> you find anywhere over your fire. Got it. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> the poor man's toe warmers. Um. All right, and then face masks for everybody. Yeah, that's that's. Faces. All right, if you're just looking for cheap scarves, basically. Yeah. Yeah, cheap scarf is not going to be that expensive. You're going to look at one copper each person. Okay. I, I, I would say if you want it to not be kind of ratty and in red bear, then you'll I want them go to like a little it, more it, than that. Yeah. If I were looking just for myself, I'd buy the cheap shit, but I'm looking yeah. for, for so my if you're looking for a more like winterized scarf that's going to yes. hold up in, in this weather, yes. then you're looking more like five copper each. Okay. Great. And then I just wrote down cold weather gear. Does that mean like, do we want like, do I want cloaks for everybody? I'm sure Jacquette would have told me that he's getting his wrap done. So maybe I don't need one for him, but Fearn and I are resistant to cold. Uh, it still a wouldn't hurt. A set of cold weather gear is 10 silver each person okay. and gives them advantage on any checks to resist cold weather. Great. All right. So I will get. So Fearn and I are resistant. Um, Anybody else resistant? We are now, the three of us have resistance with the boots. Yeah, if you wanted to, like, meet back up with Jacquet in at some point during the week, and he can tell you you don't need to yeah. buy those because you have right, the, great. the great, rings. Great, 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 wonderful, fabulous. All right, so then I won't get that. Um, just to save somebody's money, not mine. <laughs> There's a refund policy if she makes a mistake. <laughs> um, okay. So that's the, that's my portion of the shopping done. Second thing I'd like to do, um, and we could do this in, in maybe in conjunction with Bruce's, um, is I want to go to the academy and find Aoife 
and mm. we don't need to RP it, but I essentially want to do research and talk to her and pick up that conversation that we had started at Jacquette's party about mm. my patron and kind of research my patron with her and see what she had to say about that. Okay. So why don't we then uh, have... Uh, well, I guess let me check with Bruce to see if there's anything he wants to do other than... Do you uh, want my last thing before? Yeah, we sure. What's the, what's the last thing? The last thing is go go to the beach and try my lightning shit again. So that's going to be uh, because there's a bunch of other things you're doing here. You basically have to choose to either put research into Aoife or put research mm -hmm. into your lightning adeptness. You can go to the beach for fun in the evenings and do that, but you are... You can only do one work week's worth of things, which is either I research see. or training. All right. All right, we'll do the research and I'll just go to the beach for fun. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, you're specifically researching your patron. Hmm. And she had said something about sea hags. All right, so it costs money. <laughs> um, uh, it's going to cost uh, 50 silver pieces to do research. And you can give me a check. I'm going to give you a bonus if you're working with Aoife, but I'm going to need a charisma persuasion roll first to get Aoife to work with you at all. Uh, all right, so persuasion. Eight. I'm so so sorry. Um, <laughs> now, Aoife, I this actually had a lower DC because you guys not that a good, a good impression to her last time. It was you almost got it. It was it was a ten. It was a 10. Was the, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah um, so fucking. Close. Aoife does say if you come back, if you come back in a week, that she'd be free to help you. Um, so you could still research, you could still do it on your own, you just don't get the bonus of working with Aoife. Fine. Okay. 50 silver pieces. <laughs> Bruce is fronting it for me. <laughs> uh, go ahead and give me Somebody's. a... <laughs> give me a d20 roll. Five. She's rolling great. I'm so sorry, Shannon. Should have gone to the beach. You find nothing. It's do okay. Not Tell me. Learn I find anything nothing. about your Fuck. Beach. <laughs> you you do some research and 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 maybe even like Bruce and set and, and Jacquette, maybe when you guys are like in the tavern at the end of the night, like you have the book and you're just like it's like inscrutable to you. It's like read like you're just not this high level of an academic. So it's it's hard for you to to even like sort of decipher some of it you learn oh, i mean uh -huh. I i'll say at the very least you learn just sort of like a little bit about sea hags just not really appreciable for like practical use mm -hmm. you learn what you already know basically they're fey they are they trick sailors you read some folklore stories but none of them give you new information it's not that you didn't learn anything per se because yeah you know new. stuff that would be really interesting if you were just interested in sea hags and not didn't have an, another reason to be researching mm -hmm. this. So mm -hmm. you have some fun facts. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Fun they tend, facts they that tend, I can share. this is the fun fact you get. Uh, the, 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 they tend to keep a crop of seagrass outside their lair. Oh. That's Wonderful. a little more cultivated than a naturally occurring kelp forest. Great. I share this with the two of them as we're pouring over books. This is the <laughs> best I can fucking come up with. <laughs> Jacques actively not reading is uninterested. <laughs> um, which I think brings us to Bruce. So, all right. Um, yeah, we, we get to the academy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, yes, they hand someone... sass a big tome on fake creatures <laughs> and she walks away with a hump. A hump. <laughs> <laughs> um... So there's going to be several things I want to do here. Okay. First off, the most important thing before I engage in any research, Bruce needs to talk to Dean Bronin. Mm -hmm. Bruce wants access to the teleportation circle mm. in the academy. Okay. Okay. 
Um, so, step one, give me a persuasion roll. Jacquette, you, you got any advice? You got any advice? <laughs> Can I get like a pep talk here? <laughs> Um, no. All right. All right. <laughs> As quit walks away, having spent so much silver today. <laughs> all right. In that case, hold on, Sean. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Did you eat your charisma lollipop. So I got advantage <laughs> now. <laughs> um. And all right. Oh, um, uh, I'm going to add five to this for a 25. Okay. I, got a, I got a natural 19. Okay. Okay. Very uh, good. <laughs> um, I am going to ask for a second persuasion roll from you. Oh, boy. <laughs> because this was, as I did for Sass, simply to get access to Dean Bronin <laughs> this week. <laughs> <laughs> you should have told me that. I sorry. I, I almost told you before you did the plus five, uh, but it was a canon event. I had to let it happen. Uh, <laughs> Damn it! All right, I'm not gonna be able to roll that good. Dude. You still have advantage. Uh, yeah. Well. Oh. Okay. Not bad. Natural seventeen. For a 23. Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, so I imagine the... So just give me a few details about your request. Um, like, what, what? how how are you framing this? Uh, um, what are you specifically asking for? Are you asking for permanent access? Or are you asking for temporary access? What's your your pitch to him? Um, uh, I'm going to be coming here more often uh i've got a teleportation circle of my own i was wondering if i can easily travel here um i'm gonna be working with um a bunch of other members of the academy and contribute to the artificing school as a whole um and uh, since i'm contributing more time i was hoping that the artificing academy could um make my life a little easier okay okay so this conversation happens after I imagined a little bit of like back and forth, uh, yes. just sort of yeah. like, yeah, hey, Bruce. Look at I'm creating <laughs> yeah, look at <laughs> ah, good to see you. It's been too long. I thought you had uh, run out of the city. Uh, yeah, but you know. it's funny because like he as, says, as, as, "run as, out of the like, city." <laughs> you don't know if he like means like. I heard that you had your ass kicked and you left the city, or if he just means you left. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bruce doesn't... I, yeah, well... I, let's not talk about that. Uh, what have you been making? Are you, you making anything cool lately? or? Uh, before you get to the conversation about um, the portal, he does show you sort of a, a new prosthesis that he's working on um, that is specifically... Uh, a enchanted prosthetic that can adjust with the right attunement to any um, uh, species, any creature. It could be used on a dragonborn in the same way it could be used on a gnome. It can same way it could be used on a dog. Um, if it's if it's if it can attune to it, uh, and it's within this list that you can clearly see in his journal has check marks next to some things. And X's next to some things um, <laughs> to show it. And what the one you notice that is most eyebrow raising is spider. <laughs> it doesn't work on spiders. <laughs> How do you figure that one out? Uh, it took many spiders. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, the teleportation circle is a uh, a big ask here, Bruce. It's a big. Well, I have the authority, but I understand uh, all the safety protocols that it, it takes to run or use the teleportation circles. You won't need to give me a whole spiel. I won't need to take any additional classes. Yeah. Uh, and he would agree to let you use the teleportation circle in the College uh, of Artificing, uh, given you follow all of their protocol for it, in that it is a zero tolerance policy 
you break protocol, you are uh, forbidden from using the, the teleportation circle. Um, the ones that are particular for you to know for the purposes of our game are uh, that you he introduces you to an individual named Warden uh, Warden Forstford. Uh, and it is not a human. It is an automaton. It is very similar to um, uh, the ones in Sigil's lab uh, or library that are clockwork in nature, uh, very rudimentary, possibly not even like of the salvaged machina, probably made by the uh, university, not having origins in the pre pre Alphdal, pre Halcyon era. Uh, and he says, take a look at him. Remember him? Remember that face? If you want to use uh, this Bruce, thing. Bruce, Bruce, like, take, like, like, tries to get away, like, as much of the disguise as possible. <laughs> like... <laughs> and the, uh, the, the clockwork entity sort of, like, uh, does that, like, janky movement before bringing a hand down to shake your hand. Bruce, 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 Bruce Rebellin. Pleasure that's, to meet that's you. Right. Pleasure to meet you too. Warden, Warden Fo Force Force. <clears throat> Sorry. <I'll pop. coughs> Welcome to the Academy and Zach Access Point. Uh, do you have like, what's the encryption on your, your teleportation circle and tracking who comes in and out? We do have our abilities to track those who use our portal. We also have the abilities to reject entry, given unauthorized teleportation. Protocol dictates that you must, before using this portal, send a magical message to its warden. You do uh, know the sending spell, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Um, and and uh, I, I'm the warden. By, by the way, of the other circle. Of the other circle. We do not require access to your circle. I, I know, but I just... I know what I'm doing. Respect to a fellow warden. If you do not send your message, one of two things will happen. Upon identification of your personhood, we would decide whether to accept or decline based on your relationship with Dean Ronan. If we decline it, you will be jettisoned back to wherever you came from. Any complications happening upon your spatial spell is not our responsibility. Complications such as location transfiguration uh, splicing, uh, jettisons into astral seas are not part of our responsibility. For breaking our protocol, that is your issue to deal with. So your protocol is just to have any one of us send you a message and uh, before you will accept or You can reject. assign one emergency contact if you are incapable of casting the sending spell. All right, cool. All right. If we Go accept ahead, your unauthorized teleportation, you will arrive to a wall of force enclosure until we can assure you will have safely come through the portal, at which point disciplinary action would undergo. Do you accept right. these terms? Bruce Rebellin, before I give you the codes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do. Sign here. And f uh, a scroll <laughs> rolls out with uh, notably more text than like what that. he just said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this might give me a minute. <laughs> what was the warden's name? Uh, forced Word. Forced Word. Oh, Forced Word. Wow. Or, sorry, Forced Ford. It is Forced Ford. I said Forced I said Ford. Got it. Thank you. What's the password, Sean? 
You'll, I'll tell you if Bruce uh, makes you or, his uh, emergency contact. Or <laughs> <word>. <laughs> Uh, but you, the um, rest of yeah. the language in it is is legalese. There's things like the university is not liable for any magic chalk that you misuse. Uh, yeah. Like just like generally stuff to make it where like any injury that happens to you is not their responsibility um, uh, when you break the the contract. Um, you see the particular sections that are like, regardless of how far away you get jettisoned from your original location, we do not have liability for rescue operations, uh, things like that. Um, but it. basically, if you do an unauthorized movement here uh, and they reject you, you basically suffer the potential consequences of a mishap teleport spell. So you could end up either a certain number of miles from your original location or in a location that's very similar to your original location, um, but is not your original location. And then the worst possible one, you could get a jettisoned into the Astral Sea. Oh, hey. Yes. <laughs> but of course, um, Warden Bruce, that is very unlikely. Right, right. I, I know this as well. Especially <laughs> if you follow protocol. Anyway. <laughs> but you have acquired the <coughs> teleportation codes for the College of uh, Artifice. Great. Great. That's wonderful. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'd like to, with the rest of my time, um, is acquire the all of the material, the, the research material for Septimus. Mm-hmm. And as well, I would like to grab a couple of books of my own and do my own research. Um, so, uh, yeah, and it was just stuff about what I would like also like to do research on is the harsh environment as well. And in addition to that history of the temples up north <laughs> and, and the artifacts that are that reside within those temples, mm -hmm. as Fearn has mentioned. Yeah, one previously. Uh, so what you can do is you can um, use the money that Septimus uh, gave you for the books to get him the materials. He will yep. then have to use his week, his next week, to research yes. those when you get back. Um, yep. And then, but you can do you can research one one subject now while you're here. For the right, same price, then, the fifty silver. Yeah. Um, what I'll do now is I will get the books for harsh environments and the temples, uh, the artifacts in the temples. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna acquire those books, but for fun research, I'm gonna do some more advanced research on general level enchantments, and with a focus on ethereal plane and pocket dimensions. <laughs> and we don't you don't need to give me any information on that sean yeah all i need I just, is a role though I, from you i just i just want bruce to have that all right i know but i want to i want to tell you uh, you give me a role for it so you can know how many things bruce has gotten from it okay and also uh, do we, I'm, what kind of role it's just a d20 okay i'm also any, happy any, to give you some fun stuff too so no the, re the research modifiers can only be gotten by spending money on gaining more more researchers to help you there's no actual modifiers for your personal ability okay well it's an eight all right you're gonna work you're gonna learn one piece of lore about etherealness pocket dimensions that sort of stuff all right yeah yeah cool you'll get it at some point all right cool <laughs> that, that, you know that, that makes me happy yeah so bruce is gonna learn an interesting piece of lore about pocket dimensions all right, uh, back on the farm, Fearn. Hello. No, it's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, been what, a while. Are, uh, what are you using your second week for? Uh, I'm going to continue to uh, train for uh, the survival. Mm -hmm. um, would it be such a bad thing 
if I were to retcon survival and do nature instead, Sean? Um, no, I would be fine with that. Okay, so I'm going to say that I already have a week in nature, and I'm going to be doing nature from now on. Okay. Uh, and I think that I do this in the way of... Um, I continue to work with Balfour, but mm -hmm. because Balfour, you know, made a promise to um, uh, Septimus about fixing the hut, I'm assuming we get into a sort of schedule thing yeah. where he's not spending the whole day with me. Mm -hmm. uh, so on the off hours where I'm not training with him, I want to uh, basically start going on patrols around the mm -hmm. area. Um, I don't know if you would count this as job because I'm not really like taking a quest for anybody or anything, but I'm just trying to make sure that the area is safe. Cause I remember, you know, the things that we ran into the last time we were near here. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, uh, we're, if we're going to be living here, he wants it fairly, you know, he wants to make sure that there's no wrongdoing demons or whatever scouting around. So he's not spending like he's like i said most of his effort is going into training for yeah. the nature mm -hmm. uh but once you know he runs out of things to do for the day he goes on patrols and basically just w as if he was a guard protecting a road he's yeah. not really uh going off the beaten path like mm -hmm. hiding in caves and stuff like that he's just trying to put some of the stuff that he learned to good use and perhaps maybe get lucky and run into an encounter with somebody who shouldn't be there. Uh, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be something you're going to gain much from as far as like long term things you would because you can only really do one uh, activity to gain any kind of tangible benefit uh, right. during downtime activity like this. So I'll say the training is your primary activity. So you can do a mark a second week of training on nature. Um, cool. And I would say that uh, it's almost like you can incorporate this somewhat into the nature training where it's like you're doing regular rounds to to learn about environmental awareness and to learn about, you know, because this is where Balfour would have decent specialty to give you instructions. He's better at survival mm -hmm. than nature. Um, but he's able to get you going on this and keep you going to get you through the beginnings of the training. <clears throat> but you can do a little bit on your own as you're moving about. Yeah, I was going to say even, uh, you know, if it's a big farming town, they might know a lot about nature too. You know, they have to yeah. survive. They have to have their crops survive the winter and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'd say you almost like spend the first half of your day with Balfour. And then when the uh, farmhands and, uh, you know, the folks finish their work on Septimuses that they're doing. They might be like some of them or maybe a couple of them take you under the wing to go and just do some general nature training in the area. Um, but as far as patrolling during the week, you know, the worst thing you might encounter are some are some larger beasts out there. Um, you don't see any activity for like the demons like you saw or the fiends. Right now, things have seemed to gotten quiet as far as interruptions. Gotcha. From say fiendish uh, uh, notaries. <clears throat> no, they never. They didn't send the notary back after you banished them. Um, you may have, you know, it might have been a good thing to have given them the name of Roe because it may have started a long legal process within the hells that's going on right now, uh, <laughs> potentially, uh, and. <laughs> And somewhere in the hell's row is going, I made no deals, no deals, not with any adventurers, never made a deal in my life. <laughs> We've got you on magical wiretap, Mr. Rowe. <laughs> it's <laughs> a lie. But I, I it's will a say, lie. If, I, if I did make a deal, it'd be the best deal you've ever seen. <laughs> you know, this deal, you talk, this deal you're saying I was caught in, it's, it's, you know, it's terrible. It's terrible. I'd never make a deal like that. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, but the uh, second week is going to come to a close as our city folk return in the sort of early days of the second week um, and you can reconvene to discuss what you want to do next 
So we have done two weeks of downtime now, um, of active downtime. Uh, I know at the very least uh, there may be a little more research and stuff folks want to do, but we are now on the 18th, 19th uh, of, of Novum. And it's getting darker. When it, it be the 20th? I think it was the 12th. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, what are folks plan? Is there any collab? I guess is there any collaborative plans, or are we going into a more down downtime? Uh, okay. Your character Let's doesn't have about... to have anything to do. Like your character can simply be relaxing while someone else might be researching or something like that. Let's talk about uh, coin. Oh yeah, settle settle your debts actually first. Miss, I got these beautiful uh, boots of the Winterlands for you. They should do exactly what you need. Uh, all yours for the sweet sweet price of two hundred silver. Well, if it will help us, Septimus will flick him that platinum coin that he had. This is a real one, right? You'll know in an hour. <laughs> I I appreciate that. Uh, and Bruce and Jacqua gives Bruce uh, yeah his pair. And then so I've got some healing potions. Uh, I figure you know we can kind of lump this all together into like a, a party fund, if you will, and we'll divide that up evenly. Um, but who wants... Oh, and then I got these two random potions. I don't know if you boys want to identify them. Yeah, I can do that at some point. Just put them on the table over there. Jacquet puts the, the random potions. And then I think he'll disperse the healing... The potions of healing, the generic ones. Um, He'll give everyone one... All right, he'll give Septimus two, Saskia two, and Fjern two. And then he will give himself one and then one greater, and he'll give Bruce one and one greater. Um, and then he'll give Septimus the 300 silver of diamonds. Uh, and then he goes, so Septimus will be our trump card if you will if anyone goes down i assume you've got that nifty uh reviving spell yes okay so Pretty cool we'll consider that part of the party fund and saskia what were you able to procure i've got face scarves for everyone so everyone gets a nice winterized uh face scarf and i know we said we were gonna wait to do rations, but I didn't want us to have nothing. So everybody's got a week's worth of uh, rations. Um, yeah. Okay. So, the diamonds, the potions, and the rations and everything. We'll say everyone owes 165 silver. Can someone cover me? What did you do with all your silver, Saskia? I gave it to people who needed it, right? But now you need it. So yeah, are you going to go so... back to them and ask no. them for it back? No backsies, no take backs. No. So maybe it would be a good idea to hold on to your silver, at least mm. some of it. I will do what I want with my money. For sure. right now, who's going to cover me? But So that's my point, is now you owe someone. I'm right. well aware of how that Does that make you Jacquette. feel good? Does that make you feel good being in debt? What's it You already I... owe me money, I'll cover her. <laughs> Fearn, are you keeping a tab of how much I owe you? Yes, and there's interest. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what are we at? Uh well you I just gave you one hundred and sixty five and twenty five from 25. before. 
So uh, we're currently at, well, I mean, a week's worth of interest on that 25. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you really have to do interest? I've been training with you in the morning. Only 5%. I mean... <laughs> if I get up, If I get up every day this week, will you forgive the interest? Yes, I will. I will forgive the interest uh, for now. If you borrow more money than me, you're gonna have to work harder. Fair enough. So we're at 165 plus 25. Yeah, 190. Thank you. Couldn't do the math fast enough in my head. All right, so I'm gonna make a note of that. I owe fear and 190 silver. Gotta be careful. Don't miss any of the trainings. <laughs> She's gonna Basically means she can't leave. <laughs> All right. Oh, and Sass, did you uh, figure out how much money you needed to borrow from someone to pay for your the clothes and stuff? Yes, that was seventy-seven silver pieces, which I believe Jacquet put in the. Oh, count. you put. Oh, you guys did the count. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. All righty. Um, math, math. It's so simple. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. So you've settled your debts as we come into the third week of downtime. So, in reverse order, fear. Oh, okay. Uh, I do the same thing, Sean. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to give you the the. the you, the silver price for that um do you do it was probably 25 because that's what i paid the first yep. time so yeah so yeah. another 25 silver and you can mark three weeks down on your uh nature your nature check your nature skills um okay. you can officially call yourself half proficient in nature wow damn now, because skills are not typically what are used for training, to to gain proficiency, the silver cost increases for the weeks uh, oh, to boy. fifty silver each week. Um, but you only need three more weeks to get full proficiency. Okay, I can afford that. Um. So, Piran does some nature study. Bruce. Sean, <clears throat> I'm going to test out the teleporter. Okay. I'm going to contact the warden. Give him okay. a little sending. Smoke, smoke up the teleportation circle downstairs. Um, I'm not going to really tell the party yet that I'm doing this. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, no, no problem, no problem. Um, <laughs> yeah, no problem, Sean. Uh, uh, I, and um, if it's a success, which I hope, you know, if, if you want to get into that, we could. But, uh, I, you know, for the sake of downtime, we don't need to. Um, now, Bruce. Um, yep. I figured because it's two teleporters uh, going. For, I'm not casting this teleportation circle spell, which I would need to be somewhere that's not. Like I'm sorry, I'm, I'm reading the 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 rules for this. Okay. Yeah, that's not how teleportation. You still need to works. have a a means of using the spell. If you make a permanent one, it just means that you can recall to that one with the teleportation circle spell. So this doesn't solve your issue. This just gives you another another circle to have an issue about. Damn it. This will be really helpful if you My ever get wrong. the teleport spell. Your, your math was wrong, yes. The theme of this episode, everyone, is can you get your math right? <laughs> the answer is always no. All right, I guess I'm going with the, with the thief crew. <laughs> I need to go steal some money. <laughs> no, I'm going back to the academy. I gotta make another um 
Uh, I was hoping to save time by using the teleportation circle. Anyway, um, uh, Bruce needs to make a well, at least one recall item okay. back to um, the teleportation circle at Septimus's house. Ba, 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 ba. Teleportation circle. This level spell. And then with the rest of his time, he's going to research how the hell to, you know, make a more permanent one. Mm. And I'll spend the money if I need to, you know, all the money that I have. Why don't you get some money, buddy? But you can't afford it. Uh, I believe. Uh, a, this is essentially the equivalent to creating a scroll of teleportation circle. Um, but be, without some of the same features, obviously, because it's something specific. It's an artificed item. It's not exactly the same. It's not something that would require the same requirements as a spell, a scroll. Um, and you're putting some of your own work into it. Um, what I would allow you to do for cheaper is make a janky one. What is a janky one? Difference. Janky one comes with complications. I'm all in. Okay. For the janky one. Jank. Nobody needs to know if it's janky. So the janky one is going to cost you two weeks to make. <sighs> all right, I got to do it. Because a real one would cost you four weeks to make. Okay. Uh, only costs a thousand silver. Oh my god, I have just enough. I'll be left with 12 copper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and essentially, you have your one-time recall device that will have the same complications as a botched teleport spell. Oh no. So, what are you doing with Bruce? Um, I, I, don't, I don't know any better. But you have good Probably chances because you have a known circle. It's But it's not a guarantee like the teleportation's known circle. Uh, like, you still have the potential to teleport to a random location essentially okay <clears throat> but you have one uh, uh little tinkered item that uh uh you can develop <clears throat> um and i'm gonna give you permission to flavor like what it actually is and like the design that bruce has for it and what it's like doing magically um but just add a little jank into it. I don't have all it. those details just yet. Oh, you I'll don't need them yet. You, you don't need yet. them yet. Yeah. Have you played TF2? <laughs> um. All right. <laughs> but yes, you can. You have a janky teleportation recall device, which is essentially, at the end of the day, a teleportation circle spell with jank. With but jank. it's take you two weeks, so you'll spend two weeks on this. But it's a one-time use too, right? One-time use, yeah. Okay. Right. How many people can go through it? Uh, as many as a teleportation circle spell can do. Up to seven, isn't it? Uh, Something like that. I have it up right here. It's up to. Can you not transfer prisoners through teleportation circles because they wouldn't be willing? Why doesn't this have... All the details on it. This is important information. <laughs> yeah, we need to know this right now, Sean. And it depends on the individual, right? I'm just and trying to down. think about the it's, justice it's system. Eight willing creatures. Oh, like, technically it's nine because it's the caster and up to eight. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's nine. Um, Either way, that's what I'm doing. Cool, cool. Uh, sounds good. Um, Saskia. It's me. Um, hey, Bruce. Oh, I have no money. I'm out of, I have 12 <laughs> copper. 
He's also in Hyven, and you'd have to go with him to Hyven. Oh, that's right. Hey, fear. What? <laughs> Could I add another 25 onto what I owe you, please? I want to try one more time to try and do this. Uh, Fearn just pulls out his little book that he clearly <laughs> took from the bookie in, uh, what do you call it? The Otter Business. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Uh, another 25? No problem. I can Thank afford you. that. Thank you very much. And I'm adding it to my... I pull out <laughs> from my, my satchel a very, very tattered piece of parchment um, and cross out 190 and, and now write 205. I'm waking you up 15 That's minutes right. more early to avoid interest. Yep. What? Wait, what? What? I was doing math. Say that again. Uh, I, I'm waking you up 10 minutes earlier uh, for training every morning Why? to avoid interest. That Did is the interest. <laughs> <laughs> fine, fine. You know what? It's going to be fucking worth it when I can command the skies. You're at 6.30 in the morning right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sasuke, can give I... me a persuasion roll. Okay. Please. You got this. Okay, it's better than it was. 18. Okay. So you, you get a little more from your patron this time. She's willing to at least be present during these meditations. If I'm getting up fucking early, the least you can do is give me something to work with. I say to her. Okay, and uh, what do you do? Like, what do you try? What do you actually do to try to do this? Um. So the first time it happened, I had reached my hand up into the sky and kind of just like let the an energy channel out through my hand in this big eldritch blast. Um. So I, what I'm trying to do is kind of reverse the effect. Um. So maybe I'll wait for a, a day that. It seems like it's gonna storm. It's kind of, kind of gross, kind of cloudy. Maybe it's raining a little bit. Um, and I will go sit in the clearing, and I will just hold my hand up, and I'm like concentrating, trying to feel the electrical charge in the air, and trying to kind of pull the pull some lightning down from the sky. I know that's a big ask. So that that's what Sasuke is imagining in her yeah. brain. Um, obviously, it's probably not what's going to happen, but that's what she's in. Give me a, uh, Arcana check. Ooh, I'm not good at Arcana. <laughs> yeah, no, five. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Saskia. Yes. What's your spell oh, attack God's modifier? Oh, oh dear. Uh, my spell attack modifier is plus four. Okay. Or my spell attack is a nine, but the modifier no, 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 is plus four. No, no, I need the attack modifier. Plus nine. Okay. There's one that says modifier, and then there's one that says spell attack. Spell attack is what I need, yeah. Okay, plus nine. Okay, what's your AC? <laughs> Fifteen. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you call lightning. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! And yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> now let's see if you kill yourself. On <laughs> oh, no. All right. So first one hits. Good. Great. Excellent. As, first one? Oh, uh, yeah. As uh, you see a ethereal uh, aurora appears above with crackling with lightning. And you start to feel like the wind whip up around you. You feel really excited yeah. as you reach up for it. You feel like your hand is growing massive to reach and grab it in the sky as you see yes. kind of coming off of it almost like these uh, wild, almost chaotic uh, bolts shoot off uh, that almost look like magic missiles and they start to come down. Um, you can see five of them. Oh, and shit. they come raining towards you. <laughs> Fuck, fuck, wait, 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 I didn't want that much. All right, nine lightning damage as the first one hits you. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm going to add them up all together. Matt. Okay. Natural 20. Oh, no. 
<laughs> take. Uh. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Killer. Um, Do it. <laughs> the no, most no, no, lethal no, no. downtime I think, ever. I don't, I don't think this could actually. Well, I could. Max, it could kill. I don't know. You could roll um, some nat twenty. Seventeen lethal. lightning on that nat twenty. Okay. Downtime. Yep. So uh, that was two. Nineteen hit. <laughs> yep. There's three. Five lightning. Okay. Another hit. Six lightning. Okay. Eleven, twenty. We're at thirty-seven right now. Last one hits as well. <laughs> oh god. Uh, for another seven lightning as just these rapidly forty three. <laughs> yeah, rapidly these five bolts of arc Amazing. lightning come shooting down out of the sky uh, and uh, just uh, hit uh, you. Uh, you like start to like maybe even like run away from them and they just chase <laughs> you down and strike you as yep. you kinda like toast Shit. up, cover oh. it in like burns and yep. uh, lightning burns and ozone smell in the air as you kind of fall to your knees having zapped yourself to half health or less than half health, I don't know. Um, yeah, less, <laughs> less uh, than half. As you just hear a very low laugh in your head from your patron. Oh, shut the fuck up. Ugh, you're no hell. You know, I'm no fucking used to you if I'm charred. If I'm a charred piece of meat, right? Just do better. And I will be very grumpy as I walk back to the homestead. And whoever sees me first, I just stare daggers at them as my head is smoking. So I don't want to fucking talk about it. Uh, you get one more week of lightning adeptness. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jacquet. All right, uh, I think Jacquet is going to go into the city to okay. commit some crime. Crime. Love it. Is okay. LaRue. Ooh. Is LaRue. And I think, if you'll allow it, mm -hmm. he's going to go after the uh, a big target. Ooh, who is he going after? Um, I don't want to... The Leons themselves. <laughs> So I don't I don't want to get too too into it, um, yeah. but I imagine that he might go against the. I mean, obviously it's going to be the Admiralty Court. Um, mm -hmm. You know what? He's going after Cadmus. Fuck it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Fuck okay. Cadmus. Um, but I guess you know this. He I'm going for the robbery of one of the richest figures in town. So if that okay. is Cadmus, then Cadmus would be one person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are others, but Cadmus would be the one you know the you know the most. Right. <clears throat> so using that inside information, Jacquet as Larue is going to heist uh, it up. Still will need the twenty-five silver for planning. Yep. Let's get our checks. Dexterity first. Or I'm sorry, stealth first. With advantage? Uh yes. Thanks. What is it? I've got two threes. That's a 15. Oh. That is a failure. Yeah. Oh, I know. Second check. Thieves tools. Uh -oh. What is it? I flew too close to the sun. That's a 21. Failure. Final check. Investigation, perception, or deception? Deception is going to be a 26. That is a success. It is one success. Mm -hmm. um, your heist fails. Yep. So you don't get any silver, but you do yep. escape without being caught. Uh, I'd like you to roll me a d8. Yep. That's going to be a one. Oh yes. my. Yes. <laughs> oh <Okay. boy. laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got it up here right now. <laughs> so, uh, so this just is like, so 
you make your way in, you're able to get through with your own sort of uh, connections and with some of your the silver you're spending, you're able to kind of get into the academy uh, with your own laurels and then use some silver to kind of sneakily get through to be able to get a hiding spot, get some people who are going to maybe cover for you, maybe some kids who are, who are students there. Mm -hmm. um, and you're scoping out Cadmus's office, essentially. You know, uh, you know, there's there's goods there. You know, he keeps money there. He keeps important stuff there. Uh, and you, the stealth, the stealth is not working. You are trying to basically be able to get through at the right hour, at the right time when there's no one's going to be around. You're scoping it out for when he leaves his office. You know he teaches a class at a certain time. You know he does. Um, first 15 or 20 minutes of your heist, he doesn't leave when he's supposed to. He's like with mm -hmm. a student. He, you know, Cadmus, he doesn't give a shit. He'll make those students wait. Uh, and if they, if they leave at 15 minutes, he's going to fail them. Uh, <laughs> so he's just standing there talking and talking and talking. The student is like sort of like, you know, fawning over him because they're like, I want the, you know, I want the, the, the TA job with, with Cadmus. Um, <laughs> oh, no, of course. Mm. Uh, and with every, Every good fall of Cadmus, you just get angrier and angrier. And maybe your anger is, is what causes you to be a little bit ticked off as soon as he finally leaves. You're just not, you're, it, you're rusty with your thieves tools today. You've, you've spent the last, you know, it was so easy to sneak into the country manor. Quick question. Mm -hmm. You can say no, obviously. If I was to use the knock spell, would that potentially give me advantage on my... Um, thieves tool because that either automatically opens or it um, reduces the DC if it's like an arcane lock. However, it does make an audible noise. So if you would say like, no, that would cause too many complications. That's totally fair. I would say so it, specifically the audible noise would be the right. reason I wouldn't. I would otherwise allow this. Like if you had like, you know, meta magic as like a, a feat and you used si sure. a silence. Mm -hmm. Thing to make it quiet if there if there mm -hmm. weren't so many features to make spells quiet um no that's fair um also uh or if you had someone else also... with you to be like i would cast silence around him that kind of thing mm -hmm. these tools do, uh, could be also heist. used for uh disabling traps right so yeah there's a million reasons using them in that be, way yeah. but uh that's certainly though a good thing to to potentially use on a more active heist um uh, or Really, just for your next crime spree, if it's a situation that that is more amenable to it, where you're not in a dense city where you're doing it, right? Um, uh, things just aren't working. In the yep. end, someone does spot you as you're leaving. You basically persuade them to be like, "Dude, just let me go. It's not, it's not a big deal. Just let me get out of here." You I um, will. I will kill you. <laughs> I'm failing his class. I just wanted to change the numbers around. I swear. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, that person does let Cadmus know what, what you looked like. Um, and yeah. So he's looking for Larue. He's looking for Larue. Yeah. All right. I'm just imagining Bruce and like taking a coffee break from building this this complicated machine and just seeing Jacquette as LaRue just running by in the in, in the quad. <laughs> um All right. Septimus, week 3. Get those books and start popping them open. Spend it right. entirely on research to prepare for any uh, intellectual you know, nature yeah. checks going mm -hmm. up in the north. Give me a uh, d20 roll for this. Is this, would this, uh, would you be including sort of the landmark research in this? Like you're looking for information on the volcano location? Uh... Sense? Yes. Okay. Yes, I would. That's an eight. 
Just straight roll, no additions. Yeah, anything. it's just a straight roll. Okay. Eight. Eight gives you one piece of lore that you can get from okay. it. And I'll say, I don't have it, I'll give it to you afterwards, but you'll get information on the volcano. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Week three. Do, 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 do. Wait, now one is three. Yes. Oh, past, past. Okay, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Regardless if anyone wants it, there's going to be a week four because Bruce is stuck in the lab. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you can come together again if there's anything you always want to discuss before hopping into just one more. Well, we could do more than four, but. Uh, Septimus, did you learn anything about you know, what's up north, and uh, should we grab any additional items for travel? You uh. did not learn anything about specifically, <laughs> like, monsters to that might appear, or anything beyond just sort of that location of that volcano. So you do know, though, from that research, that that volcano is at, like, the midpoint of the Gosu haunt. Mm -hmm. on the uh, eastern shore of of uh, Alfdal. So the nice thing is you don't have to do a Oop. sail to the other side of the island. Um, it would be... It still may be wise to port in Sercanto uh, and, and tread, trudge there. You could uh, take a ship, but similar to uh Durandel's ship it's very risky waters in yeah. the bays around this area uh and you'd have to anchor in and sail in but the waters are very risky i'll give you more information before next session uh about yeah, about this this location but generally speaking you know going directly to it by water would be very 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 dangerous the safest route is to either Port close to Sercanto or port further north. Um, mm -hmm. The issue with further north is you have a lot further to go if you need to retreat from this place, although you do have a means of teleportation. You're in a lot more remote area. Uh, so, but it would be, uh, I'll give you more details for, for next week on that particularly. Okay. That's fine. But it confirms that by, by water is probably a good bet, like you all planned. Yeah. Yep. And at least that you don't have to trudge over a mountain or sail all the way around the island to get to it. Okay. Uh, Septimus, I've been um, been working hard on uh, preparing us, or you know, preparing my skills, trying to remember things from uh, back in my uh, outdoorsy days. Um, is there anything in those research uh, books that? might help me with my training. Well. Probably. I, <laughs> you, yeah. I mean, you. there's like plenty of things you read. Like, it's like that kind of thing where you go in, you start to read it, and it's like, it's going to take me so long to find what I need in here. Uh, you know, and, and just got distracted also by other things going around around the camp. Maybe it was hard to focus and get into the nitty gritty of it. There's almost certainly more information about survivalism within the harsh environments of the northern parts of the Alfdal Islands that could help Fearn in his studies. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'd be willing to continue taking a look. Uh, I don't know anything offhand. Right now, but Yeah, I don't want to slow you down. Uh, I'll just, you know, take a look at the books that you finish. Oh, well, then I guess... Um take a look at these and I can point you to the chapters where I do recall reading something passing by. Thanks. Okay. This will be a big help. Alright, so we know what Bruce is doing for this next week of downtime. He's working on his invention. Uh, to go back in reverse order, Septimus, what would you like to do during the fourth week of downtime? Um, could I try and continue just researching again uh, uh instead of just a landmark could it just yeah. be for 
uh, dangers or creatures in the area just to be yeah. aware of. Yeah, definitely. You can give another another uh, another look through the books. Got this. So D twenty roll. Mm-hmm. You say that. Got this. You say that, but little oh, do you know that I roll seppy. too. Seppy. Should I give him help? Come on. <laughs> You we would help be each for, other. You would be forgoing your week of research um, to help him with his week of research. Don't worry, don't worry about it. It's fine. Uh, or your week of training. So, I train. fortunately, Septimus, you start to get frustrated with the text because nothing is that useful that you're going through. And, I mean, there's a stack of books, um, so there's, like, more to go through, but generally you're running out of books to read through. Um... And it would take you uh, either uh, a new discovery or you'd need to go back to Hyven to to look for new books to research with. All right. That's, that's it, what it is. Okay. Jacquette. I'm going to crime, but not as much time rhyme. Yeah, I'm just gonna uh, go after Noble. So, okay. Yeah. Twenty-five Not silver bad. up front. Mm -hmm. Let's get the, st the stealth check. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Okay, twenty-two. There we go for success. Sublime. Thieves tools. Twenty-seven. Second success. Ooh. Okay, twenty-seven. Okay. Oh, yeah, I just yeah, I just this is your can't too high. This is your like uh, your area of expertise for now until your your um your literally your expertise gets higher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yes, you do get your two hundred gold pieces from a robbery of a noble with no complications. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, Saskia. Um, I'm still pretty pissed that I struck myself with lightning last week, so I'm uh -huh. gonna spend this week relaxing, and there I'm, you go. I don't want to get up any earlier than I already am, and I don't want to ask Fearn for more money, so I'm just gonna brood, if you will, and relax for the next week. So. You get advantage in saving throws to recover from long-acting diseases and poisons. At the end of the week, a character can end one effect that keeps the character from regaining hit points, or can restore one ability score that has been reduced to less than its normal value. Uh, this is where Saskia secretly finds out that she has a much higher charisma uh, score than she thought. No. Um, so, yeah. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Cool. cool. Alrighty, um, Bruce, we know what you're doing. Uh, Fearn. You know what I'm doing? Training that nature. I, I'm still training that nature. I don't know if you <laughs> want to do the research as like, uh, it could just be cosmetic, but I yeah. could also use like a little discount or maybe some time <laughs> off. <laughs> I'll, I'll say, um, because, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a discount for it. I'll give you a discount for it. You're looking at 30 silver pieces instead of 50 for this next week. Sweet. Um, but you're basically like used up the books for... Makes for sense. Um, More than so, fair. Alright, so you have your fourth week of nature training. Sweet. Bruce comes back with a teleportation device group comes together a month later are there other things folks want to do for another week this is a good time to check in with every, each other about your plans two more weeks of training <laughs> I don't want to get up at fucking six o'clock in the morning fear and also I don't want to borrow 50 more silver off of you but if if, if you insist well, think you could use two weeks to make some money, and then you won't owe me as much, and then you won't have to wake up early while we're traveling. I mean, 
Might want to head out sooner rather than later, as is, I think we've theft about enough. Your brother will only get further inland, right? And it's only getting colder as the seasons change, so... You know. yeah, I'm ready to go whenever you all are. I'm happy to say I, I seem to better clue of where he might be located. As I think one of the automatic books has some sort of scribbled kind of map on it, or like sketch yes, or something. Yes, yes, yes. And I'll point, and just be like, I believe it is located here. So if we go on our original plan of sailing to port, that might be the best way, because again, the waters are fairly choppy. But that should be our destination. Sounds good to me. Very we well. Should, uh... Uh, Bruce, could you potentially cast uh, Sending to Captain, whatever his name is, of the Otterly Seaworthy? See if we could charter them? Alder. Sure, whatever you say, God. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Uh, let's see. I thought it was bubbles. Yeah. They could be harsh. They could be harsh. <laughs> um, as uh, Bruce sends, uh, what was his name again? Gold. Captain Golder. Gold Golder. Captain Golder. Um. Hey, Cap. I'm sorry, it was Galdus, not Golder. Galdus. Um, On your left. Galdus. Hey, Captain. Yeah. Wait, wait, before I continue, uh, mm -hmm. does uh, Jacquet, you charted a boat last time, right? Uh, Sass did. No, Sass did. Sass did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Saskia needs to charter another boat to, uh, where do we see we're going? We're going to... We go to Haunt. Sacanto. Sacanto. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Sir... Sacanto? One word. It's one word. It's one yep. word. Okay. We would like to leave quickly. How soon can you? <clears throat> Your best friends. <laughs> Iron Man. <That's> <laughs> uh, okay, you would... You would get a response at some point. Oh, oh. Uh. Is that you? That's you, Bruce? Uh. I, I've. Uh, it's been a while since I've gotten a sending spell. Uh, straight to the head. I was enjoying my lunch. Uh. It's, uh, sorry, uh, Sir Kanto, you said? Sir Kanto. Ooh. That's a nasty, nasty business. Uh, well, uh, if you're in, if you're going to be in Hyven in the next week, uh, we should be arriving back in port uh, in a couple of days. Uh, you can meet with us and we can figure out your, your plan I you're all pretty capable in your your band so perhaps the troubling waters won't be so bad but this is a very dangerous very dangerous chartering you're requesting it could cost you quite a bit oh no <laughs> uh, another setting spell <laughs> We understand. 
how much that would that cost us? Good to hear from you too. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's it. Uh, chartered vessel to Sukanto. No cargo, I presume. Just you all. Uh, do you do you need a, a charter back as well? Oh, oh! I I just remembered how these sending spells work. You, this isn't a free flowing conversation. Hey, it's a thousand silver each way. So, uh, guys, it's uh, it's gonna cost us a thousand silver each way. Oh For my! Each? Jeez. Well, I, I mean. I have a means of getting us back home. So it would just take another, I mean, thousand silver just to get there. So we need to do another month of doing some work. <laughs> I can supply that, but that's it. The coffers of Jacquat Touchard will be empty. I mean, I have 12 copper to my name right now, so. Uh, Sorry, I'm, 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 I might have 215. Silver pieces. Uh, you know, is it really? Is Fearn's brother really worth this? <laughs> I, I don't know. Fearn, how much does your brother cost? We What's said we were worth? going. We're fucking going. We made all these preparations. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you gonna pay for money. it? No, but we already yeah, spent exactly. all this money. We already spent all this money. Have you heard a returner's fee? What? What are we doing? Like That's days. when you return what? things for a Wait. fee. Do you keep your receipts? Hey. Receipts? No, you just bring it back. <laughs> what? What do you want, Bruce? <laughs> that ring. That valuable ring. Why don't we sell it? What ring? What ring? What ring? The one that we, uh, that uh, person had uh, when they attacked us outside Kana's house. Or, or uh, not. The Aradunai? Yeah, the Aradunai, that one. Who's got that ring? You, you took it, Saskia. I did? Yeah, it's a plus ones. No, it's a ring of shooting stars. No, no, I'm sorry. Ring of shooting stars. Yeah, you also, there was also a plus one spell focus. How much do you think we can get for this? I didn't put it in my inventory. I lost forgot, it. I forgot about the ring of shooting stars. <laughs> oh my God. That you thing didn't was lose so good. It. <laughs> it's here now. We have it because it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> that is a very rare magic item. Right. <laughs> So we should sell that. <laughs> I mean, it's not mine to sell. It's not it's yours ours. either, by the way. It's ours it's to ours sell. Ours to sell. We worked we, together. We, we, we procured it defending ourselves from people that were trying to harm us. So, yeah, but One more <laughs> week of downtime to find someone to buy this? <laughs> I could find someone to buy it, and let me tell you, we will get... What we want for it? Will we get and the same? Some. Will we get the same price for it, or will we get like? Well, Chuck Wet actually, holy fuck! Um, <laughs> you, if you want to leave this, <laughs> maybe this is next week's. <laughs> yeah, are you looking at the same? I am price? looking at the exact same price you're looking at. Yep. With a proper I, persuasion I roll from the guy who can only do good well, on persuasion remember that i had wait distort value <laughs> um which is a word i think distort yeah. value only works on things that are already led that are low in value <laughs> uh unless you're reading the spell don't say that because it does not do anything of the sort it's literally doubles the value of something End story. It does have a specific size. I mean, I would assume that if I'm selling it, you know, to give the DM some, some leeway, if I'm selling it to someone that's a magic item procure. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm going to say the distort value is not going to be as effective. There's going to be a little also, their their ability to investigate it is going to be higher than just like a. A right common good my dc is only 16 so yeah. it's possible I, but sure if you wanted to risk it 
because you would get a lot of money if you did that. Yep. I'm back in the green, baby. <laughs> in the green. I was gonna say, like, rue the day that fear no, has no, more no, money no, than Jacques. Wet, it it would not it would be it would not be that much. It would okay. be a little it'll be a little bit less if we're following the selling of magic items, Anathars. It would be Oh, okay. It would be not that much less though. <laughs> it would be twelve thousand, not fourteen thousand. Right. Still stands. <laughs> um because you would up it to 8,000 gold value, and then it would gain Wait. with your persuasion roll. Oh, I have to double. Selling. So very rare is 40,000 gold pieces. Holy shit, and I'm looking at the wrong thing. Yeah, so I'm doing you a favor there in saying 14,000, because I like Xanathars for a lot of things, but they're buying a magic item and selling a magic item. Not great rules. Let's save this for next week. Uh, sure because thing. I also don't like that you just sit and doing you a favor for this this year, too. <laughs> yeah, for 14,000. That's a favor. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Compared to what Xanathars, 40,000 gold for a very rare item. Jeez. And I would automatically get 150 the sale. base price so that would be yeah. sixty thousand gold that jacquette could get selling that My full Lord. stop we could buy a lot of health potions <laughs> that's an understatement that's right and this is where even with all the silver uh conversions you try sean you can never fix the broken economy that is dungeons and dragons fifth edition so speaking of lost items in across all our sessions, uh, also, uh, Septimus, do you still have those gems? Gems from... Uh, Jacquet gave you two elemental gems when oh. at the same time that I gave uh, Fear and the Mask. Yes. Do you still have those? Holy you got shit. a necromancer skin book that we could sell if we're feeling uh, very irresponsible. Yeah, Pretty sure you're not, not going <laughs> to stay in the web box. Uh, you sure you're not going to need to? Man, I shouldn't have been so kind on certain things. You shouldn't have. Well, yeah. it's 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 it is. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm a little. I need to think about this. You're gonna get that much or close to that much. Most likely, but here uh, we can buy you another brother. <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh, want a mechanical God. brother. <laughs> yeah, we just make you him. Oh man, I very easily gave away some low. Okay, all right. Let's let's think about that next week. You have a ring to sell. You have to go into town to sell it. It does take you a week to procure a set uh, someone to buy it. Um. Uh, I am going to use a little bit of logic here for this that is not going to entirely just be pure uh, purely from the Xanathars. Sure. Um, you need to find sure. someone who sure. wants to buy a ring of shooting stars. Um, there are only a few types of people who want to buy a ring of shooting stars. Uh, I think I know someone who wants to buy a ring of shooting stars. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. Cadmus wouldn't mind looking at this, but um, alrighty. So a month has passed. It is now at the twenty sixth of Novum. It is mm. uh, no, it's yeah. the third of oh, my lord. No, because a week passed. We, we have had done four that, weeks. We? No, we just did. That's what everyone's last thing that we oh, just did said. I, maybe I skipped a week in my count. No, I have the the week four. I have no, no, no. He's right. He's, yeah, he's week correct. four that we finished. Be yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, because a month's passed. We've done mm -hmm. twenty-eight days. So beginning of quote week five. Correct. 
It's the third of El Luin Glom. 1326 in the year of our lord really Machina. <laughs> uh, it's a Tears Dog or Maris. On Septimus, this is his harm, farm stand. Uh, okay, so uh, <laughs> I had some other things planned, but now, but it's also late and I'm thrown by the fact that they mm. technically. If I were to follow Xanathar rules as written, could walk away with an ungodly amount of silver. <laughs> um, if you got a successful distort value off, and Jacquet's, you know, didn't get a net one on his persuasion roll, which wouldn't even matter. Literally can't, because uh, he can't. Uh, you'd be walking away with like a hundred and something thousand uh, silver. Uh, mm -hmm. But we're not doing that because no. That doesn't make any sense right now. Because uh, we like our DMs here, and we're not yeah. trying to screw them over. Because suddenly, I would not be kind with some of these negotiations for items anymore. No. <laughs> I would not be giving you the lowest cost for them. <laughs> Those boots would have been more expensive. <laughs> yes, they would have. <laughs> um, but anyway. And the rations. The rations. <laughs> actually, well, the rations are actually following the, the silver pricing exactly. And non-magic items are easy. Clearly, magic items are difficult. <laughs> um, anyway. So, uh, different, you know, vibe than a, uh, you know, a role play or a, a combat or an adventure session. We're getting through some downtime. But our players have spent a month. Sit, sitting around doing nothing. No. Uh, nothing. I would consider, I would recommend that all of you consider that entering into next week's session in that you should not be treating it as if a day went by. Uh, right. Doesn't mean that you made any big headways in your relationships, obviously. We didn't do any major role play. But you should consider the fact that you've spent at least four weeks of, I would say, relatively amicable time together. Um, like no one was getting into fights or anything during that time, other than the usual quips. Um, so consider your characters a month older, a month wiser, <laughs> and uh, for a moment poorer, but maybe much richer soon. <laughs> uh, richer and we'll, in friendship, uh, and silver, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe Sass won't give her share away this time, uh. She likes giving her silver away to everyone but the party. Yeah. <laughs> to people who need it, who who help the party. Last pe person I gave all my money to, wasn't it the, it was the... It was Kana. 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 Yeah. 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 Jeff you also West. royally screwed over another NPC that helped the party. The the no, one really in the temple district. Oh. Oh, well, that's, oh, yeah. that's different. That was an accident. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it never helped us. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, it's going to start giving an allowance to Sass. That's how this will move forward. That's actually hilarious. Uh, please what, do I'm that. What did you say? The first part? An allowance. <laughs> Jack going to hold on to your coin until you can learn to use it responsibly. I love that. That's amazing. It's actually really funny. Uh, but anyway, watch what happens next week when they go to sell a very rare magic item in the city of Hyven. Um, and uh, procure their ship to take them north. All right, folks, we're going to head out then uh, and see you all next week. We're going to send a raid on over to D&D &D Jordan Lee, who's playing a little Baldur's Gate. Ooh. Uh, and I Throw believe might be doing a charity as well. But nice. uh, right. go give them some love from us, and we'll see you all next week. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Yeah.